Let's see how many of those we're able to get in here this afternoon. We've got a window of opportunity, and this is a track with the speeds on this half mile. They can knock off a lot of laps very quickly. So if things stay clean and green, we might be surprised how quickly we can get through this Pinty's Fall Brawl. But they use that word brawl for a reason. It's the final race of the year, and every one of these drivers wants to get the final checkered flag. They want the bragging rights to be the final NASCAR Pinty Series winner of 2022. So we're about to see something, and we're not sure what we're going to see. Will it be calm, cool, collected drivers, or, or right now are they itching to get going? This rain delay can really throw off all of those routines the drivers have to get ready for the start of a long event. And when you get out there on the grid, you're ready to go and the rain comes down. It's awful difficult to bring everything back down and then have to get back called to your cars and get back and fired up and ready to go again. But these drivers know what they're doing. We'll see how itchy they are at the beginning to get going. And obviously we'll see them on track for a few laps to get some heat into this racing surface. Caution flag comes out. Cars are rolling here. What a sight. What a job by our safety officials, all the folks out there that got this track dried to where it was. That was a quick turnaround, so thank you to each and every one of those officials. And thank you, fans, for sticking around. We appreciate it. There's not much you can do when you see what's coming on the radar. But uh, everyone stuck it out. We're ready to go in what should be a great one here at Delaware Speedway. See Brandon Watson, quickest in qualifying. He's chosen the outside line for the start of this one. Matthew Kingsbury coming up to speed, gets that car fired. Glenn Styers a little slow on the back stretch, but everyone will get things up and going and sorted into the right position. Look at that. Elliott's up on the flag stand again. There you go, Elliott. Adam Ross in the tower, winded. You're Who winded? You're breathing so heavy, you should be out there drying the track right now. That's not a bad idea. I mean, you're usually full of a lot of hot air, so. I what? made it up those stairs every time this week, and I was all right. This time it seemed tiring. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they got this track surface dried pretty quick, a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be for the amount of rain that fell, but a great job here this afternoon. So what they need to do is get most of the, the water gone. The track is still wet, but nothing will dry it faster than 27 stock cars running on it. So we'll wait and see what they do. We'd, we'd heard the plan was possibly to run some yellow flag laps that might count. We'll see how that plays out <clears throat> at a partial speed. And, and this is fairly common in the NASCAR world where we've seen this in years gone by where you run them at a light pace, but like you said, nothing's going to beat these cars. The exhaust coming out of these motors is gonna dry this track very quickly. There's a couple things that need to happen. We need to get to lap 126. We need to get to the halfway point to make it an official. But more importantly, we need to put on a show for these fans. I mean, this is a big car count. Biggest car count I can remember in a long time on an oval track. Quality cars, quality competition. We've got new, we've got old, we've got people needing to win, to, to go into their off season feeling like they've accomplished something this year. Field lining up in order here. Rookie of the year contender on the pole for this one. What a year for Brandon Watson. He's been so good. Last night in the APC series race, we saw him put down a ton of oil. The drain plug came out of the oil pan. It's stuck because they're magnetic. It's stuck to the oil pan. <laughs> so they came into the pits. The oil is spewing out of the, the drain pan. 
but the plug was still there, so they got the plug in. Six liters of oil is what it took to top it back up. He got back out onto the racetrack and was able to put on a show. Yeah, finished 10th last night. And I think the most impressive part for Brandon Watson this year, we know him for his oval track skills, but he's gotten it done all year long. And, and this is a, a series of great diversity. It really is. Rafael Lassard, he was the next big thing. Uh, I don't know what the reasoning was, whether it was funding, whether it was a, a decision to back things up a little bit to, to, to achieve more. To make another run down south, we got Rafael Lassard. Look at the youngsters, Trayton Lapsovich, Jake Sheridan, Ray Morneau. And they're out there with veterans like Alex LeBay, DJ Kennington, Alex Tagliani, Andrew Ranger, a first-time champion, and Mark Antoine Cameron. The fact that the 96 car fired to come and take this green flag secures him of the title. Flagman Mike Charest is doing one of the most important jobs there is today. Thumb up, thumb down. And he shows that to the drivers. So when they come by, you can expect they'll be giving a thumbs up or a thumbs down on what they feel uh, the track is like. Is it suitable to go racing? Is it not? And I heard him come over the radio right now said, I didn't see anyone show me anything that last time by. So NASCAR officials will communicate with the spotters. NASCAR officials on pit road can communicate to crew chiefs. Let's remember, Mark Antoine Cameron basically by starting this race wins the championship. The battle for second place in points is still hotly contested. Kevin Lacroix, DJ Kennington, Alex Tagliani, all with a shot. Greg, it comes down to dollars and cents. Second place pays more than third place. Yeah, and, and you could throw away all that money, and it's still, if you're a race car driver, you want to finish as high as you can, whether it's in a race or a season-long battle. Yeah, the money obviously is at the forefront of your mind, but as a competitor, you want the absolute highest up the chart that you can get, and that'll get settled here this afternoon. DJ Kennington, I chatted with him on the racetrack. He was smiling as he walked across. I said, DJ, you haven't smiled all season long when I've walked by you. He says, you talk about all these French drivers, Kevin Lacroix and Andrew Ranger. He says, don't forget about me. He says, I'm here to win this thing. He had a couple of more things to say. That you maybe soften that up a little bit when you, when you announce it. But he means business. He's here to, to win this race today to put an exclamation mark on his season, and, and he can do it. You know, he seems to be having a lot of fun for a guy that went a few years without winning, uh, did a couple of years ago and got back on that. But this weekend, I've watched him on pit lane, and he just seems really happy, uh, joking around with a lot of people. And I know that's DJ Kennington, but this weekend, he just seems to be excited to be here. He used to carry a lot of stress. DJ Kennington, Dave White together would prepare a lot of racetracks to come to come to the races. He had a lot of stress on him. He's unloaded a lot of that where the focus is the 17. I believe he prepares the 71 machine. I, I'm not exactly sure the dynamic, but I do believe he has less stressors in his life that he can focus on the Castro Edge Dodge. And physically, he looks phenomenal this year. Wow, the transformation he's done with some weight loss there and First time I saw him, he looked like a totally new guy. It's inspirational, I'll tell you that much. Here you go. Unofficially, I believe I heard them say three to go, and we're going to uh, drop the green flag on this Pinty's Fall Brawl. There's so many drivers out here to watch. Matthew Kingsbury hasn't done a lot of racing with us this year in that 12 machine. Would love to see more of him. Jake Sheridan getting the opportunity to get behind that famous number three for Ed Hackinson Racing. Ray Morneau Jr., the biggest cheer in the house. <laughs> there were more people here wearing Ray Morneau Jr. hoodies than there are wearing any other driver's apparel. And for such a mild-mannered kid from Windsor, Ontario, of course, Close family friends with Speedy Jack Monahan, the late Speedy Jack Monahan. So you know this is a big deal for him and his race team.
Once again, we got to mention Elliot Smith, the honorary flagman for this one. Green flag in hand, waiting for his opportunity. All right, we got a thumbs up from Mike Charre. It's kind of the maestro down there. There we go, being called to bring the field down to normal pace. Two to go, I think is what I heard. Two to go. You know, funny thing, earlier this year we got talking about the move over flag and how it was, it was my thought that the flagman doesn't use the, use the move over flag until after you've been put a lap down. Because as long as you're on the lead lap, it's unnecessary. Wasn't I racing this summer on the track and I'm going to get lapped. I said, God, I hope they wave the move over flag because I want to know yep. when the leaders are coming so I can get the <laughs> heck out of the way. So he told me I was mistaken very politely, and I proved him right. Lights are going out on the pace car. Elliot Smith going to step into place with that green flag in hand. He's no rookie. Nope. He's waved a lot of flags in his life. Spoiler alert, Mike Charest going to stand behind him. He'll have his hand on his back. When he pats the back of Elliott Smith, that means it's time to wave the green flag. Brandon Watson is the control car. He's got to cross the line first on the outside. Everyone stays in line until you pass the start-finish line. And, Greg, I dare say this is going to be a very tame first couple of laps, but watch for the last few rows in line. That's where the bottleneck is going to happen. Waiting for the green flag from Elliott Smith. Brandon Watson on the outside. Rafael Lassard on the inside. The Pinty's fall brawl is underway. Off they go into corner number one, and it is a little bit of patience going through one and two. You can see that trepidation on the front few drivers as they work in there. Trayton Lapsovich quickly trying to find his way down to the bottom. And they'll come off the corner. It's Watson, Lassard, and Lapsovich, your top three. From third on back, they are stacked up. Double wide, Trayton Lapsovich up high. Donald Teej on the inside, still racing side by side down the back straightaway. Nobody getting the clear advantage. Donald Teej maintaining his track position on the bottom. It looks like Lapsovich will clear him off a of four. And the top two all clear sailing right now for them, but it is a bit of a mess behind that. Now Trayton Lapsovich does get down to the bottom, clears Teach. He's side by side with Steckley down the back stretch into three. Watson and Lassard out ahead by about eight car lengths. You can see these drivers really having to pedal these race cars to keep them under control. Ray Morneau, a little bit deeper, got down to the bottom of the racetrack. Kevin Lacroix took advantage and made some moves to the outside. So the great news is with drivers running both lanes, it's going to drive them off and make them raceable much sooner. Andrew Ranger way up out of the groove in the 27. Wow, he saved that one. Nice job by Andrew Ranger. He's still got a handful down the front straightaway. I almost thought something was wrong there for a moment, but he seems to be back up to full speed. It, it, yeah, there was a lot of lane changing and moving around like that That car was taking him for a ride down the front stretch. And some smoke now out of Ray Morneau Jr. 0-3 machine. Oh, what a heartbreak as he goes down into corner number one. And the inside line will go by Ray Morneau, and that will stack up a few cars behind him. Everybody's doing a good job to get around that 0-3. He knows there's big trouble in that machine. He's up to the high side. Slow. What a heartbreaker for Ray Morneau on that 0-3. Such high hopes. He was fast earlier on. So out in front, it's Brandon Watson over Raphael Lassard. Then it's Trayton Lapsovich and DJ Kennington third and fourth. Kyle Steckley fifth. Donald Teej end up getting shuffled out of the top five there in the last handful of laps. DJ Kennington looking for that third spot. Drives to the inside of Trayton Lapsovich up off a of turn two. He'll go deep down into the third turn trying to clear the 20 machine. He clears him in turn four. So obviously under the hood issues. Engine area issues for the 03. A Ray Moore knows the hood goes up on the 03 machine. We continue on with Brandon Watson, Raphael Lassard, now DJ Kennington in third. 
Rick McCall, the crew chief on that 03, he knows what he's doing under the hood of that thing, so if anyone can get it sorted out, if nothing else, Ray Morneau would love to get out here and turn some laps. But what a disappointment for the young man from Windsor. Losing laps as he sits on pit road. Another time by the flag stand for Brandon Watson, who put down the quickest lap earlier on this afternoon in a brand new track record. As uh, there was a, not sure the total final on how many got past that track record, but Brandon Watson breaks the record held previously by Trayton Lapsovich set one year ago. Yeah, we should have been keeping track of that, but I wasn't on the ball there. Kyle Steckley putting the pressure on Trayton Lapsovich now. That's a battle for the fourth spot. They're about half a straightaway behind our race leader, Brandon Watson, as the hood goes back down on the 0-3 of Ray Morneau. It's either good news or bad news. Morneau's either going to rejoin the field or pull back into the garage in that 0-3. Now looks like he's going to continue on as he goes across the start-finish line. Watson now being able to see the back end of the field. Green Amato will be the first one in his windshield, along with the 71 Cathcart machine. Ray Morneau unofficially lost six laps on pit road in that 0-3, so now it's a matter of just gaining experience in that race car. We've seen people gain a lot of laps through the free pass program, but well, expecting to get back six laps, Greg, that's going to be a tall order. Like you said earlier on, I mean, it, the, for him in that car, first race in the NASCAR Pinty Series, yeah, it's not the finish that you want, but to be able to just ride out there and get some laps and feel comfortable is still a huge thing. Even though he may not feel it right now, it's a good thing for him. Best thing for him right now would be to get out there behind the 74 of Kevin Lacroix and turn laps, just kind of shadow the Napa driver and see what he can do over the next 200 and some laps. We are 16 laps into the Pinty's Ball Brawl. So leader works by the two machine, now works on Cathcart as he goes down into corner number three. Lassard will follow suit, trying to work through this lap traffic. DJ Kennington drawing up closer to Lassard as he's pulled away from this battle for the fourth spot. Kyle Steckley takes it over as we got oh. one around up in corner number one, uh, two, rather. Stacy around. Yeah, it's almost hard to see him backed in against that light standard. He'll get the car rolling once again. So our first yellow of the day will sort out who might have been trapped out there a lap down because this could be a lap back for Ray Morneau because if they go back to the last lap before TJ Rinomato and Brian Cathcart got lapped, that could put Morneau in the free pass position. Let's take you through a rundown, folks. With 18 laps complete in the Pinty's Fall Brawl, apologies for the scoreboard not functioning quite the way it should, but Brandon Watson leads the way into number nine. Second is Raphael Lassard in the 8th, third to DJ Kennington in the 17th, then it's the 22 of Kyle Steckley in the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. 6th through 10th are the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, the 80 of Donald Teeds, the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron, the 3 of Jake Sheridan, and the 18 of Alex Tagliani. 11th through 20th is Andrew Ranger in the 27, the 92, Dexter Stacy, 12 of Matthew Kingsbury, 98 of Sam Fellows, 36 of Alex LeBay, 64 of Mark Dilley, the 59 of Gary Clute, the 47, LP Dumoulin, JP Bergeron in the one, the 84 of Larry Jackson rounds out that top 20. Then it's Glenn Styers in the zero, the 28 of Trevor Monahan, the 31 of Daniel Bois. Brian Cathcart in the 71 and the two of TJ Rinomato. All of those cars unofficially on the lead lap. Yeah, both Cathcart and Rinomato, the back of the line right now. So, so because Wallace Stacy was a lap down, I'm, I'm not sure why Ray Morneau is not getting a lap back here, but. We're going to go, one to go. Brandon Watson choosing the outside once again. It's important, Greg, to mention 
The outside of turn four is where fresh asphalt was put down, and we are hearing that that is a favorite place to restart. There's a lot of grip up there. Well, that was done during the off season here, so a different racing surface in some areas. Now, obviously, the turns, uh, the concrete areas in the turns are what they're used to from years gone by, but that fresh asphalt has really given us that outside line, and we've seen a lot of good racing there. Here comes Branham Watson, first to the line, back into the green flag. Such a treacherous restart here at Delaware. Walls on both sides of that front straightaway as DJ Kennington side by side with Kyle Steckley down the backstretch. Brandon Watson with the lead, but Rafael Lassart putting the pressure on our race leader. Kyle Steckley to the outside of DJ Kennington down into corner number one and that beautiful number 22 machine. Here comes DJ fighting back on the bottom. Boy, did Trevor Monahan ever have his hands full contact with Glenn Styers going down into turn one and he got shot up the racetrack. Meanwhile, back at the front, the battle for third remains side by side. What a close race between Kennington and Steckley. Steckley right out to the wall. That opens things up for Kevin Lacroix now in that Napa Auto Parts number 74. As they come off a of corner number four another time, it's Watson, Lassar, DJ Kennington, and then that battle between Steckley and Lacroix. Three wide down the front straightaway. Matthew Kingsbury on the outside. Donald Deej was in the middle with Jake Sheridan going to the bottom. Kingsbury got the best of that. Jake Sheridan will squirt by, and that opens the door for Andrew Ranger in the 27. DJ Kennington now closes the gap on Lasardi. He's right there on the back bumper. Down into corners number one and two. Meanwhile, it's still side by side. Lacroix and Steckley. We're getting a glimpse here of how that second line works right now in Delaware. Steckley up on the high side, trying to stay ahead of Trayton Lapsovich in that 20. Lapsovich with position on the bottom of the racetrack. They'll go door to door down the back stretch out in front. Brandon Watson building up that lead just like he had before that first yellow. Whoa, trouble for Jake Sheridan. Shoots way up the track in turn three. That allows Ranger to go by on the bottom. That was the story during qualifying. That turn three was treacherous for a lot of drivers and been a lot of action so far down there in the start of this one. You're definitely not wrong there. Creighton Lapsovich going to clear the 22 of Steckley. Kyle Steckley gets down in front of Mark Antoine Cameron. Down the back straightaway, DJ Kennington keeping the pressure on Rafael Lassard in that number eight. Kennington's combatant for second in the points is closing in behind Kevin Lacroix in the 74. So Kennington has a look to the outside in three and four. And we'll draw right up on the back bumper of Lassard down the back stretch. Now they go back into corner number three. Again, Kennington looks to a lane outside of Lassard in the eight machine as they roll it off the corner another time. Still Lassard in the second spot. Boy, mid-pack right now, Adam. It's a frenzy. Yeah, Donald Teach and Gary Clute racing side by side down the front stretch. Not a lot of room there between Clute and the outside wall. But he's going to make that pass on the high side. Dexter Stacey's going to try to follow him through in that 92 machine. That battle going on well outside the top 10. Donald Teach really struggling with this car right now. He was up in the top five at the start of this race and has faded back. So uh, definitely he'll look for some adjustments if he gets a chance later on in this one. Strange things on the scoreboard on the screen as well. We've got one through 10 and then one through 10 again, but in a different order below it. So. We'll get that sorted out. At the front, Kevin Lacroix continues to close in on that three-car battle for second. DJ Kennington has fallen off the back bumper just a little bit from the aid of Rafael Lassard. It's been all Brandon Watson so far, but we watched that battle second, third, and fourth right now. Lassard, Kennington, Lacroix. And uh, as you said, Adam Lacroix is right there now. He's closed the gap. Trayton Lapsovich behind that. And Kyle Steckley. Whoa, trouble in turn three. Sam Fellows goes around. Glenn Styers goes around. Trevor Monahan goes around. Daniel Bois does a nice job squeezing to the outside. And Sam Fellows and Glenn Styers will go down a lap. 
believe Trevor Monaghan is going to avoid going a lap down as he gets that car rolling once again. Flames under the hood, up in the wheel well of that zero of Glenn's tires, unless I'm seeing things. No, you can see it there on our monitors. Definitely flames under the hood of the zero. I could almost imagine he busted a brake line maybe in that zero. What else? Unless there was rubber up in there that somehow caught fire, but uh, we'll see as he comes by our position. Slow smolder right now for Glenn Styers. It's still burning. That car looks to be dog tracking a little bit as well. Oh, yeah. Rear end all cattywampus. There you can see the right rear is pushed in pretty hard. What a shame. Glenn Styers uh, ran Friday night, Saturday night. He felt good about what he was learning. And, and out on the racetrack, he was right behind Larry Jackson for the longest time turning laps. And he looked pretty stout. I believe this will put an end to the day for the driver of the zero from Oshweekin. Uh, this has been a very valuable weekend for Glenn Styers, running Super Stocks on Friday, Saturday with the APC Series. There we see Sam Fellows, and I think the T's ready. Yeah, so the overflow, which is kind of the dummy line that comes up yep. the windshield to let you know when you're overheating. Not a big surprise that it would overheat, because once you shut it off, there's nothing, nothing remaining to cool that engine. The Styers crew goes to work down there, and they're pointing over the wall. Oh, I believe someone was over the wall without a helmet on. Jimmy is the crew chief on that car. Doug Brown gives plenty of assistance down there. Of course, it's a white motorsports entry. How convenient that that right rear quarter panel was kind of ripped away. They can just lift up and get underneath. Chatting with Sam Fellows just before the green flag, he said, you know, it's, it's been a good year. They've learned a lot. They want to shed some of the bad luck that they've had. That is not what's happening today. And I'm not sure if he doesn't have a brake problem the way that yeah. car rolled into the pits. which would certainly bring upon a problem going into turn three with all that speed down the backstretch. If you got any sort of a brake issue, it's going to show its face in three. Daniel Bois making his way back onto the racetrack. He has lost a lap in the pits. Wallace Stacy going to get the free pass in that 66 machine. I'd, I'd be shocked if they can make repairs to that zero at Glenn Styers to get him back on the racetrack, but you never know. Friday night in the Super Stocks, he took the radiator out of the car, but there was a red flag. They were able to put in a fresh rad, fill it with water, and get him back onto the track. 38 laps are complete, race fans. Yeah, so I figured out the scoreboard. If you look, there's the three. The eight is where first place is, and it's been changing. So that's the lap. <laughs> okay, and the we, leader is nine. Second is eight. Third is 17. Yep. 74 Lacroix. What kind of <laughs> IQ test freaky <laughs> question is that, right? Like I'm impressed I figured it out. <laughs> that is impressive. <laughs> there's a software uh, incompatibility here. We, we've had a digit misplaced. They're all there. There's just no spacing. Hmm. If you could get rid of the, the word lap, I think it would probably maybe solve some of the issues. But nonetheless, we'll try to keep you posted, folks, on <laughs> what's what. But Wallace Stacy will be the last car on the lead lap, running in the 23rd spot. And we've been reminding the fans all weekend long. I'm sure we don't have to at this point, but the screen on the front straightaway, a great opportunity to see what you want to see and get a different look of the action. Well, drop the jack on the zero machine, continue to work as laps click off on the scoreboard. They tape up that right rear quarter panel, the deck lid. 
It's amazing what you can do with duct tape. There's nights I'd love a strip of it, Adam. I think you know where I would put it. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Uh, it's a long off season, Greg Collin. <laughs> You're going to miss me when I'm gone. Every shot. So it looks like we're ready to get going again. And the Steyr Zero machine does roll back out. See how well that will hold together. Yeah, I'm not convinced the back end agrees with the front end of what direction that car is <laughs> supposed to be pointed, but he's going to get out there and give it a try. And we're going to go back to green with Brandon Watson up high again in the nine machine, Rafael Lassard down low in the eight. Watson gets on it, heads down into corner number one. Lassard, though, will stick right with him. Good restart for the eight machine. Watching that field still double file all the way through as Rafael Lassard trying to put the power down on the inside, but still Brandon Watson breaks out in front. Lassard to second, DJ Kennington settling into third as he beats Kevin Lacroix off the second turn. Trayton Lapsovich back there in fifth. He's side by side with Kyle Steckley. It's a single file amongst the first four and then it's still crazy. Oh, Jake Sheridan got sideways off of four. Andrew Ranger had to get off the throttle or he was going to turn that three around. Alex LeBay looks to the outside of Andrew Ranger. A couple of former series champions racing behind Jake Sheridan in that three machine. Up front, deja vu all over again. Although Brandon Watson not getting away, but the eight of Lassard, the 17 of Kennington, the 74 of Lacroix, second, third, and fourth in a row. And right now, Kyle Steckley showing off that outside line here at Delaware Speedway. I think he's been out there pretty much every lap of this race as he's again door to door with Trayton Lapsovich. As here we see D DJ Kennington down to the inside of Lassard. Down the back straightaway, Kennington trying to pedal a little bit faster than that eight. He'll drive it deep into turn number three. We used to say with that preferred inside groove, but both lanes have a lot of bite coming off the corner. Lassard fights back on the outside, but it was DJ Kennington that lap holding down the second spot. DJ Kennington inches ahead down the back stretch, this time by 48 complete on the board for leader Brandon Watson. Now it's DJ Kennington second, Lassard back to third, Lacroix in fourth, and at the line, Kyle Steckley edges ahead for fifth. And Steckley edges ahead being the key. Oh, Steckley caught a little bit of the wall off of turn number two. That allows Trayton Lapsovich to draw ahead of the 22. And now Mark Antoine Cameron going to try his hand. Racing on the inside of the youngster from Milverton. Wrapping up a championship here this afternoon. And he looks to get himself into the top five for the first time here today. And that number 96 machine, he'll... Go to the inside of Kyle Steckley, another time in three. Just phenomenal racing we're watching here. Not a lot of contact, it's close quarters racing, but these drivers giving each other as much room as they need to operate out there. Cameron will go by Steckley, and here comes Alex Tagliani in that number 18, right up on the back bumper of the 22. So 51 laps on the board now for Brandon Watson as we watch this fight with Mark Antoine Cameron chasing down Trayton Lapsovich, Kyle Steckley behind him, and then Alex Tagliani in the 18. Up towards the front, Kevin Lacroix starting to flex his muscle a little bit and try to make a move on the eight of Rafael Lassard. You can see DJ Kennington in the 17 pulling away from that eight, so he knows he's got to keep a move on if he wants to keep pace with the driver of the 17 machine out in front. Brandon Watson again, just ever so slightly faster. DJ Kennington trying to track him down, but the battle to watch is for that third position. As Lassard has it, Lacroix is right there on his back bumper. Trayton Lapsovich has a bit of breathing room back in the fifth position. Things have kind of single filed out now throughout the field, logging some laps right now as lap 54 goes on the board. 
once you learn how to read that scoreboard, you're kind of showing off a little bit. <laughs> Best battle on the racetrack. We've got to look fairly deep. I'm just sorry. I'm just keeping an eye on Glenn Stars. That car has got some sheet metal flapping. The rear end looks a little unstable. And the reason I'm watching is Brandon Watson's bearing down on this battle between Glenn Stars and the Monahan 28. Yeah, the right rear oh. fence. Oh, trouble for Wallace Stacy. Wow, Brandon Watson threads the needle there. He had to make a decision. Poor, poor Glenn Stires. It, it is a good plan. If, you, if you, there's an accident in front of you, and I remember reading in an article, I believe it was a Circle Track magazine where Rusty Wallace said sometimes the best thing to do is to just lock it down, spin it out, or point it to the infield and spin it out to avoid an issue. Let's have a quick look at this replay. Stacy gets into the corner a little bit hot. Glenn Styers closing in on Trevor Monahan. Monahan saw what was going on, got a little bit loose under braking, and Styers had to really spike the brakes and went around backwards. Oh, now I can't show off. Which is kind of ironic because electronic timing and scoring has gone down for me on the race monitor and now we don't have the scoreboard but we do know we're about 60 laps into this pinty's fall brawl fantastic to see it such a a big group from pinty's holy mel i know castrol's had a big part of this weekend they've had a bunch of people out here and Different groups. I know Tricorp has a, has a bunch of people out here. Uh, Daco, welcome to the series. They've gotten involved in the 84 of Larry Jackson. Brandon Watson's just been smooth and steady here since the drop of the green flag. He has been good since the day I first started watching him. I've, I've never seen him in any sort of a a learning period he's so calculated with what he does i mean he's not yet 30 years old and he's almost got 20 years of car racing experience and he's cool as a cucumber even when he was young not an animated person by any means no soft spoken it actually surprised me to know that he was quite a hockey player Oh, he, even for that. a young hockey yeah. player, he's, he's fairly subdued. So many good race car drivers and so many good stories in this field of cars. When they cross the line this time, it'll be 60 laps complete. Be called to double it up. Little bit of precipitation falling. Brandon Watson choosing the inside. That Interesting. might be, do you think the little bit of precipitation has any bearing on that? Would you rather be on the bottom if it's a, what, what a did, little moisture? What did we just say? He is calculated, and whether the track is dry or whether the track is damp, Eight tires will stick much better than four. Exactly. Thank you, DJ. <laughs> so we'll stay under yellow. They, they'll keep the cars doubled up because they put out a ton of heat onto this racetrack. So hopefully whatever blows in will blow on through. But keeping these cars double file will keep the racing surface raceable for as long as possible. We've seen it. Newfoundland, we had some weather this year. I don't think there's a facility we go to where, where we haven't over the years had some sort of weather delay. 
it does add to strategy. Are you racing to lap 126 or are you racing to lap 250? Yeah, it's hard to say here this afternoon. This uh, radar just keeps changing continuously with the showers. So a guessing game here as we see Glenn Styers back on pit road again as they work on the right rear of that zero machine. So no request being sent to the drivers on thumbs up, thumbs down at this point. So what they will do, they won't just run continuous laps under yellow. They'll either go back to green or they'll bring the cars down pit lane and, and wait things out. Because nobody, nobody bought a ticket to come and watch a NASCAR parade, so... They do keep that in mind. But it is a fluid situation, Greg. I see what you did there. Yeah, I like that. That was nice. So discussion still going on on what the, the decision will be. And... Uh, they didn't make it easy. Sherry Putnam in her final race as the series director for the yeah. NASCAR Pinty Series, and she's been through this numerous times. If she thought the last one was going to be simple. Exactly. Joke's on her today. Boy, oh, boy. I mean, what do you do? The, the forecast all week for this day has been... It, it actually got better the closer we got to it because earlier in the week it looked almost undoable but uh, yeah. the fact that we're seeing laps a good thing and the crowd showed up all three nights the crowd showed up all four nights because the concert yep. looked to be very well attended the campground this is the first time we've been able to see grass over on that campground it was absolutely jammed friday and saturday night a fantastic weekend this has become over the last couple of years it's a marquee event it if, really is if you're watching this on a stream on flow flow or tsn you've got to put this on your calendar and you've got to make the trip up here it's affordable tickets it's an affordable great weekend of racing and entertainment and just the racetrack itself we've talked about this over the weekend Come to Delaware Speedway, the atmosphere is, you can't describe it. You'll fall in love with this place the first time you come. So they've picked up the pace of the caution car. The reason being very simply to keep temperature in the track, let these cars get some heat in their tires. First car to spin out loses. <laughs> so communication being sent out from officials to to get with the spotters, to hear from the drivers. Their goal is to go racing. Uh, the goal of the officials to, but they, they have to have some sort of consensus from these drivers that the track is suitable to do so. At this point, it's all but Brandon Watson. DJ Kennington has slowly been making his way toward the front. Mark Antoine Camerand, who comes into this event, all he had to do was start the race to be officially named champion. He's riding in the sixth spot. Without the pressure of having the points race, he doesn't have to worry about anything about except going out and getting that checkered flag, and he's 
been making his way closer and closer to that top five. Mike Shereen, the flag man once again, requesting the thumbs up, thumbs down from these drivers. And try to see inside the cockpit of these cars to see if we can see. I can't see a darn thing. But we are getting reports that multiple drivers are giving the thumbs up. Kevin Lacroix, Trayton Lapsovich. Three laps, race fans. We're going to go back to green flag racing. Great job being done by these officials. It has been a long season. Our, our post-pandemic racing is back. We've crossed the country. We've been to Alberta, Saskatchewan, Quebec and Ontario multiple times. Newfoundland. It's been a wild ride. These teams have put in the miles and put in the hours and the effort. And it all comes down to this. A typical fall afternoon in <laughs> southwestern Ontario. A lot of these drivers have experience on dirt after racing at this weekend this year, so yep. car control should be at a premium right now. These drivers, they can handle a little sideways action. They've got it figured out. Do you, do you participate in any fantasy football, Greg? A little bit. I benched Lamar Jackson to play Kirk Cousins this week. Oh, yeah? Because his health was questionable. I didn't see the scores. It didn't go well. didn't go well. I'm a Dolphins fan. I had a very good day today. Did they win? They beat the Bills. Where Was the game in Buffalo it, or Miami? No, nah, I was in Miami, so it's you take it for what it is. The Dolphins no. seem to be able to beat the Patriots and the Bills at home, but not okay. on the road. So, well, no. Small small victories. It's not a small victory <laughs> if you're a Dolphins fan. Here we go. We're ready to get back to green flag. We'll see if those thumbs up. Are still going to be thumbs up in turn two. Brandon Watson down low. DJ Kennington up high. We're back under green. Good start through one and two. Side by side for that top spot. DJ Kennington working the outside line off of corner number four. Did he ever will himself to the top spot there? Lap led for DJ Kennington. In the 17, Brandon Watson down low trying to fight back, but DJ Kennington rolls that Castrol Edge Dodge out in front. Brandon Watson chose to restart on the inside line. He'd started from the beginning of the race on the outside as we got one way out to the wall. It's Ranger. He'll gather it back up. That almost bit Matthew Kingsbury and Gary Clute as they had to take evasive action. So it's DJ Kennington at the top of the pile over Brandon Watson. And then you've got Kevin Lacroix, Raphael Lassard, and Mark Antoine Cameron into the top five now. Cameron's got the spot for now. Trayton Lapsovich working hard on the bottom of the racetrack. And that RGC quick, quick number 20 machine. Cameron trying to squeeze him down. Here goes Brandon Watson looking to take that lead back. Pointed that Tricorp number nine to the inside out of turn four. Had to tuck back in line. Let's see if he tries again down the back stretch. Boy, he's right there on the back bumper as they head down into corner number three. DJ Kennington holds the top spot, drifts up just a little bit. Watson cuts it down low off of four. They're door to door at the line. DJ Kennington leads that lap at the stripe, but Brandon Watson is on the charge. He's got a great run out of turn number two. He edges ahead of the number 17. The takeoff out of the corners for Brandon Watson. Then that number nine car right now is all the difference. He's got the power right to the track where he needs. He leads at the line over DJ Kennington. Kevin Lacroix right there. He's trying to follow the nine on the bottom. Kennington shot up the racetrack a little bit in one and two. Now he gets back to single file. Kevin Lacroix closing in the top four. Nose to tail then just a couple of car lengths back to series champion this year, Mark Antoine Cameron. Right now it's Trayton Lapsovich back there in sixth. Seventh is Kyle Steckley. Eighth is Alex Tagliani. Ninth into the inside of Tagliani is Jake Sheridan. And tenth right now is Alex LeBay. 
Sheridan completes that pass on Tagliani. Tagliani able to get down the racetrack in front of LeBay. At the front, Kevin Lacroix right up on the back bumper of DJ Kennington in that 17. Wasn't able to make it work in one and two. He'll draw closer in three and four once again as Kennington struggling to keep that 17 car down the racetrack. I think Brandon Watson has made a statement here now. DJ Kennington was able to get by him on that restart, but we're seeing that the nine car definitely is the dominant car here this afternoon. Mark Dilley just had a moment in turn number two, slid up the racetrack. Donald Teague got by. Yellow is out for Wallace Stacy going around in turn two. I'll tell you what, there's nobody better at getting that car pointed back in the right direction without losing a lap than Wallace Stacy in the 66. And he does it again there right in front of Brandon Watson. So now what does the driver of the nine do on the next restart? He tried the bottom. Uh, I would say he goes back to where it paid off earlier on. I would imagine we will see him back to the top of the track just like you said, Greg. But now DJ Kennington, that could have been entirely strategy, knowing he wanted to lead a lap. He wanted to get that bonus point. He knows if he's got a better car than the nine. So he only had to drive hard for that lap and a yep. half to get the spot. Yeah, Brandon was intent on getting that lead back. And again, we've got to mention Tricorp is here at the races with a number of guests. So thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for your support of, of multiple racers. So it's Brandon Watson at the front over DJ Kennington. Kevin Lacroix right now in third. Fourth is Raphael Lassard. And fifth is Mark Antoine Cameron. Back in the sixth spot is Trayton Lapsovich. Seventh, Kyle Steckley. Eighth is where we find uh, Jake Sheridan. Ninth, Alex Tagliani, and 10th is where Alex LeBay is right now. So the top 10 on the track. 87 laps in the book. 87 complete, 163 to go. Pit Road opens this time by. Okay, now Ray Morneau's getting the free pass. He's, he's darn near 10 laps down, but one to go, going to be signified here. No takers on pit road. Great job again by the officials keeping things rolling. Brandon Watson hasn't committed yet. Now he'll move up to the outside in that number nine. D.J. Kennington, formerly known as the Castrol Kid. Now the Castrol Kid has a kid who is racing. Not today, but running micro sprints, Greg. Tradition continues. It's what racing's all about, isn't it? Here we go. Back to the green flag. Watson on the outside again for this restart. Tried the bottom last time. He'll jump ahead of the 17 machine. Here comes TJ back on the bottom. Door to do, door through corner number two. You got Laquan Lassard stacked up behind. Watson got the better start up on the high side, but DJ really rolled through the center of the turn well in one and two, doing the same in three and four, sliding up the racetrack. A little bit of rubbing there between three and four. Brandon Watson still with the lead as they work down into turn one. I'll tell you what, this racing surface today is putting on one of the best shows I've seen in recent memory here for the NASCAR Pinty Series. We've seen it throughout the pack today, and out in front it continues side by side. Watson now will edge ahead at the line. And the subtle things that both of those drivers were doing to get the best position, the best angle to come off the turns is just watching two master craftsmen do their thing. Top three now have separated themselves. Trayton Lapsovich back up there into the top four as he'll get by Kevin Lacroix at the line. Lacroix still digging on the bottom, oh. though, and there goes Kyle Steckley up the track. Don't know if he had any assistance there from Jake Sheridan, but Sheridan was certainly there to pounce on the opportunity. Wheel that three car to the inside. We'll probably know down into turn one if he had much assistance, but Kyle... Oh. Baby, Stacy got into the back of the 18. Now LeBay will go around. 
That is not something you see very often, but there was a reason for it. Yeah. Contact into Alex Tagliani, and Alex LeBay was just the innocent bystander up on the high side. He'll go around in that 36. Yeah, I think it was Dexter Stacy that caught Alex Tagliani and sent him sideways, and Alex LeBay caught up in that. But this is how they've been racing since the drop of the green flag. We've had a couple of stretches where they got single file, but a lot of side-by-side -side racing throughout the entire field. Ray Moore knows 11 laps down and getting another free pass, so he'll be 10 laps down. Just 10 more yellows, folks. Ray Moore no could be on the lead lap. <laughs> What a great opportunity for Ray Morneau. When John Art's group got involved with that young race car driver, and they, they come as a package, it's the whole Morneau family you get. A phenomenal group. And a young man who really was born to race. One to go with the line again, a quickie yellow. Brandon Watson, no surprise, going up to the outside in that number nine. DJ Kennington, very impressive on these, this opening lap after a restart. He is able to generate a lot of speed in that 17 as Alex LeBay comes down onto pit road. They'll make a chassis adjustment on that 36 and send him on his way. He's going to come off a of pit road right around the same time as the field comes up to speed off of turn number four. So LeBay still at pit road speed down in turn one. He'll be about half a lap behind, maybe a little bit less because Brandon Watson likes to wait before he fires. He'll lead them off into one. Boy, close call there between he and DJ Kennington as they roll through the corner. Kennington right there on the bottom. Whoa. Renamato out of shape there in turn number two in the number two. But look at this battle for the lead off of turn four. Watson by a nose at the stripe. But can Kennington drive it deep down into turn number one to the inside? Still they race side by side. What a battle between these two. You said it best. They're craftsmen right now. They're showing what they are good at racing side by side clean. We've seen a little light contact, but nothing. And now, oh, Trayton Lapsovich squeezed up by the wall. He'll come to the outside of the 17. Here comes Mark Antoine Cameron as well. It almost looked like Cameron got the 20 loose down into the corner because I think Lapsovich had a better run than that. And he had to check up just a little bit. Now Rafael Lassard to the inside, side by side for that third spot at the strike. Wow, I thought Glenn Stiers was going to catch the pit lane wall there. He got sideways at the back as we continue out in front. Brandon Watson, DJ Kennington now break away, but they're stacked up from there on back. What a battle we're searing. Lap after lap somewhere on the racetrack, there's been fantastic battles as Jake Sheridan in a power slide off of turn four, racing to the inside of Kyle Steckley. Neither of them have, to, oh, trouble for Dexter Stacy. He goes around in turn number two. No yellow flag just yet. We're gonna stay under green as Dexter Stacy gets pointed in the right way. And now we'll go under the yellow flag as the field bears down on Stacy. And we'll see how the officials respond to that. Ray Morneau getting another free pass in that 0-3. It, it really does matter. If Dexter Stacy had not moved from turn two, they would have gone yellow, but because he moved, got the car in the right direction and then stopped, we'll see if that draws a penalty from the race officials. It's not so much whether you're guilty or innocent, Greg, it's whether you look guilty or innocent. Especially in a race where time is of the essence. You, you just feel that bearing down. We could get it every lap in this afternoon. It's very possible. But when you know whether it's in the back of your mind, uh, those cautions can loom heavy. 
And here comes Morneau back around again. Well, Stacy coming to a stop there in turn number two. We get the replay of that, making sure he stays on the lead lap. But again, you also have to err on the side of the driver. Because what, what if it was a situation where the car stalled as he was trying to get it in the right direction? Let's see if they're going to hold that 92 in the pits. We'll know if there's an official standing directly in front of the car. Then Dexter Stacy, in the eyes of the official, has been a bad boy. Nope. The Every Child Matters paint scheme. They're trying to get that right front fender tucked underneath the hood. Close I enough. I think they're going to possibly go one to go this time by. That was the... Might not be time for that now, but... We're going to remain under yellow. Just a couple of issues on the racetrack with the running order that they need to sort out. Jake Sheridan having a good afternoon working his way through the field. Right now in the eighth position, I believe. Jake Sheridan's a real elbows up kind of racer. The, the physical style of racing doesn't bother him one bit, which I think will make him a fantastic NASCAR Pinty Series racer. Had a good run last night, coming home second in the APC Series finale. I didn't see where that left him in points. I believe he was 10th in points coming into last night. I'm not sure if he could have moved up a little bit, but he did the things he needed to do. Had a great run as we see the one-to-go signal. Brandon Watson again heading to the outside in that number nine. 106 laps complete. When we take the green, it'll be 107 complete. In the scheduled 250 laps. So Brandon Watson once again electing to take that outside line on the restart. Had just that one attempt on the bottom right after we'd had that light mist of rain. But ever since been right back up on the top. What a battle between these two on the restarts. A little bit of back and forth there. Brandon Watson with the advantage on that restart. He sails it down into three and four on the high side. DJ Kennington going to try to get drive off the corner. He gets sideways in that 17. That allows Rafael Lassard a great run to the outside in the number eight. Here they come off the second corner, door to door, right behind leader Brandon Watson. Lacroix, Lapsovich, Sheridan. They're three wide mid-pack. LeBay backs out of it back there. Yeah, he just ran out of racing room. Oh, problem for Gary Clute in the 59. He is off the pace, coming off of turn number four. He gets out of the way, down to the inside. Let's see if he gets back up to speed or if possibly that, no, that looks terminal for the 59 of Gary Clute. He is off the pace, down the inside of the racetrack. Job by everyone there to avoid the 59 machine as we stay under the green flag. Watson, Cannington. One and two, then it's Lassard and Lacroix going at it again in the eight and the 74. Lapsovich back there in fifth, riding, watching this side-by-side -side fight. Off of turn number four, they race wheel to wheel down the front straightaway. Lacroix on the inside, he's still back in fourth. Rafael Lassard with the nose ahead at the stripe. Lassard looks right at home up there on the high side of the racetrack. Troubles for the 28 of Monaghan. He's back going again, so we'll stay under the green flag. Watson and Kennington breaking away. It's still Lacroix and Lassard going at it side by side down the back stretch. Things have kind of filed themselves into single file from there on back. It's that battle for third still hotly contested. Lassard pulls ahead in the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. They've lost a lot of ground to the race leaders, Brandon Watson and DJ Kennington. Kennington keeping pace with the nine of Watson. This time at the line, it'll be 114 laps complete. 
Watson continuing to lead by a car length over DJ Cannington, who, you know, you, you might just be right, Adam, that uh, he went up there, he led that lap, and right now he knows he's got a good car, biding his time with Watson, not pushing the situation. It's a long race. Wow, Trevor Monahan had problems again that time in turns one and two. Gets the handle back on that 28 machine, but the leaders are approaching quickly as he works through three and four. Let's see if he's able to get that car back under control. That was the problem spot last time down into one and two. He seems to be a little bit better, but definitely is a little off the pace. There's Monahan as Watson will work around him in corner three. DJ Kennington following suit off the fourth corner and things have settled down between Lassard and Lacroix back there third and fourth. Fifth right now is Lapsovich in the 20. And here's Jake Sheridan up to sixth. Driver I'm watching right now, Alex LeBay in that number 36, trying to make his way back through the field after that mishap. That's a tough battle back there. Matthew Kingsbury in the 12, LP Dumoulin in the 47. Right behind them, it's Mark Dilley, Dexter Stacy, Alex LeBay, and Larry Jackson. It's all been Brandon Watson since the drop of the green flag. DJ Kennington able to get ahead of him briefly, but have to think Brandon Watson maybe, unless DJ's holding something back, Brandon Watson seems to have the better long run car. From what we've seen on the longer stints, he's been really been able to pull away from the field. DJ Kennington's good on those restarts. No, I think you're absolutely right, Greg. So. In a green-white checker type situation, DJ Kennington might be in good shape, but as the race draws out, Brandon Watson has a lot of speed in that Tricorp APC number nine. Leaders catching Wallace Stacy is now Kevin Lacroix again. Ratchets up the uh, aggression on the eight machine as he tried to take a look off of corner number four. Lacroix on that Nap Auto Parts machine. He and Lassard have been connected almost this entire race. Wallace Stacy in the 66 gets down out of the way as Brandon Watson puts him a lap down. DJ Kennington will be the next one by in that 17 machine. And they've opened up a half a straightaway over Raphael Lassard in the number eight. And then behind Lassard, things seem to be closing in. Kevin Lacroix in the 74, the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. The three of Jake Sheridan. 96, Mark Antoine Cameron, 27, Andrew Ranger, 22, Kyle Stackley in the 80, Donald Teach. They're all sort of in that group within about a half a straightaway of each other. Donald Teach has done a nice job to get back up into the top 10. Remember, he started up there running in the top five, slipped quite a ways back through the field, but he's been patient, worked his way back up. Kyle Stackley, who had been charging towards the front, now has dropped back into the ninth spot at the halfway mark here. In this Pinty's Fall Brawl. 125 laps in, 125 laps to go, but the important thing, Greg, is this race is official, so it is time. These, these crew chiefs will start looking at weather radars to see if anything is approaching and let their drivers know if they need to let them loose or to keep pacing themselves. 125 more laps to go. There's a long race still ahead of us. I'll tell you what, if you look at the horizon, there is a lot of sunny patches in the clouds, so we may be able to rattle off a number more laps, hopefully all of them here, to conclude this Penny's Fall Brawl. Glenn Styers just got all sorts of sideways, battling with Daniel Bois in the 31. Brandon Watson closing in on TJ Renamato. One of the sponsors of that nine machine, RGC Sports. The yellow flag is out. DJ Kennington's picked up some trash on the nose of that car. It's right on the front grill. See if that'll come off as he, uh, what drops in speed? Did we hear what the yellow was for? I'm not sure if this is a scheduled break. Oh, I think I'd heard that earlier on. Break race, were, yes, yes, yes. They yes, were yes. talking about uh, fuel and whether or not they would make it to the break if they ran too many yes, uh, yes. laps at the start. So I think this is the scheduled break. 
And good timing for T.J. Kennington, who I, I do believe needed that. As we're seeing on screen right now, he needed that grill cleaned off. Yeah. There it is right there. Good job by the truck to catch that. And, I mean, that seems small, but it, you run a long enough time. That's a lot of airflow being cut off to that motor. There is so. A lot of air being – every bit of that opening is important. That's why they tape off portions of it because the more you tape off, the more the air can clear over the, the front and the top of the race car. You cut through the air better, but you limit the air coming into the engine to cool that radiator. So next time by will be the break. See crew members sprinting through the pits. So the one thing here with NASCAR, where your pit stall is, is not where your truck is. Yeah. So if they do need to get something out of their haulers, it can be a long venture. What a race it's been. Let's set the table here, folks. Brandon Watson has led almost all of the laps. The ones he did not lead, DJ Kennington scored a couple. Rafael Lassard in the eight runs third. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix is fourth. Trayton Lapsovich in the 20 is fifth. Sixth through 10th, it's the three. Jake Sheridan, 96. Mark Antoine Cameron, in 27. Andrew Ranger, 22. Kyle Steckley, and 80. Donald Teach. Running 11th is the 18 of Alex Tagliani, 12th it's J.P. Bergeron in the number one, 13th is Matthew Kingsbury in the 12th, 14th the 47 of L.P. Dumoulin, and 15th the 64 of Mark Dilley. 16th, Dexter Stacy in the 92, Alex LeBay in the 36 is 17th, Larry Jackson in the 84 is 18th, Brian Cathcart in the 71 is 19th, Daniel Bois is 20th in the 31. 21st is the 2 of T.J. Renamato. 22nd is the 66 of Wallace Stacy. All of those cars are on the lead lap. One lap down, we've got Trevor Monaghan in 23rd. Nine laps down is Ray Morneau in the 03 in 24th. Then we've got Glenn Styers, Gary Clute, and Sam Fellows, who have all had bigger problems throughout this day. Cars on pit lane, and... A couple of things here that have caught my attention, Adam, that uh, I'm pretty excited about. One, at 4.30 today, I didn't think we'd get this many laps in because it looked kind of gloomy there for a while. How much rain came down, the radar looked pretty bad. Secondly, it's been the racing. The racing this afternoon has been phenomenal. A lot of side-by-side -side action, whether it be for the lead, battles for positions in the top five, or even deeper in the field. A lot of side-by-side -side action. This Delaware Speedway repave is really really turned up the notch here it has lived up to its billing we've got some some announcements to make robbie frampton robbie frampton please call uncle butch it's a pressing matter they would like you to call right away some birthday wishes keegan 12 years old today thank you for choosing to spend your day here with us at the racetrack what better place to spend your 12th birthday? Good food, good races, good company. Not up in the announcer's tower, though. I haven't eaten much today. I meant the company. <laughs> See, that's where I need that duct tape. We also like a birthday shout out for Ashley Seidler. From her nephew, Corey, and you're welcome, Corey. I'm not going to even mention how old your aunt is. She's very young, Greg, but there's things I know. There's <laughs> things that are off limits. So up and down pit road, these cars are going to take on fuel. These cars are going to take on tires. They can make limited adjustments. They don't have a lot of time to make the adjustments happen. The reason they do a halfway break instead of a live pit road is for the amount of money it saves these race teams from having to bring a full over-the-wall pit crew. Um, that's basically the long and the short of it, Greg. It's yeah. a cost-saving measure. But with the number of cars that have shown up here for today's event, 
I'd have to say some of the things that, that NASCAR is doing are definitely working. We're, we're trending in the right direction up here. Yeah, great car count here this weekend. And the racing has been phenomenal. Look at that car, that DJ Kennington car. I love his black car looked great. Don't get me wrong, but I really like going back to these classic Castrol colors. Yep, it's a great look. And, I mean, that's a long-standing partnership, and we love those long-term deals. The, the, the Castrol Edge, WeatherTech with LP Dumoulin, Napa Auto Parts now with Kevin Lacroix. But also great to see some new partnerships out there. Dayco on the side of the 84 of Larry Jackson. Of course, O'Neill Electric was, was relatively new in the last year or so. Tricorp again. A bunch of guests here, so it's the new with the old, and that's what keeps things exciting. Actually, speaking of new sponsors, we can't leave out Jake Sheridan because that deal that they put together, he had some help with that. Sherba's great flooring, vibrant farms. Help support him and get him out to the racetrack. Little band aid going on the front end of. Is that uh, camera? Yeah, that it is, is camera, and that's camera. the 96 machine. Yep. Can't say enough about the great work JC Paillet has done assembling that team. Robin McCluskey, the crew chief on the 96. Caden Lapsovich, the crew chief on the 27 of Andrew Ranger. If I'm the competition, I am concerned about having to battle that race team in years to come. So how many laps down Ray Morneau right now? Do you have the... Nine laps down. Nine. He's made up a few here with the cautions. And the fact it, it does help racing on this half mile because it takes a while for the leaders to catch the back of the pack. And the, and the field's been that strong that, you know, not a lot of drivers going laps down, so... You know, I think back of the, the glory days of the Cascar Super Series when you'd have, I believe they would start 40 cars in this race, but the parity wasn't there. I mean, there were six to eight cars that were just heads and tails above the rest. What we have today is a lot of quality equipment out here. I mean, the, the, it's it, good hardware out there on the racetrack. It still fascinates me. You can bring 27 cars to the racetrack, and they can qualify within you know a half even a half a second seems like so small mm -hmm. yet they can do that that's that's how how little of an adjustment you can make in a corner how you set up how you take the corner can throw off your lap or make it the best one of the day you can't be off you've got to be on the marks at all times no matter what distractions are out there no matter what you see when you look up in the sky the clouds off to that side but it's sunny up to that side you, you've got to put it all out of your mind and just focus on the task at hand I'll tell you a great job also being done by the 31 of daniel bois the, these are not oval track specialists but he's done a good job he's he stayed on the lead lap out there a great race car driver the MBS Motorsports Access Chevrolet 31. Looks like all the cars refiring to join the field. I heard, heard over the radio someone was going to need a push, and it must be the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. The crew is trying to do that. There he goes. Whoop. How about a round of applause, folks, for the crew? I mean, all the ones standing, but especially the one that took a tumble. Nobody was watching. It's okay. <laughs> You're all heart, Adam. <laughs> Listen, they put their heart and soul into it. They, they, if they weren't trying so hard, they wouldn't have done that somersault. Stop, drop, and roll down into Detroit. It's actually a public service announcement. <laughs> If you happen to catch fire, folks, stop, drop, and roll. Or if you push a race car. So the WeatherTech 47 of LP Doomlin, they're doing a little bit of extra 
Kerr down there in turn number one. I believe that's Mark Brochu right up under the wheel well there. A brake issue on the 47. This is not a place where you can run without your brakes being at 100%. Gary Clute rolls off. Gary's had a rough day here today. He's got to be a number of laps down. I would, oh, no, he's going right behind the wall. So, rough end to his 2022 season. You know, in case it hasn't been mentioned, racing is hard. You know, these teams, it, it looks easy. You watch it on TV, you sit in the stands, you think, how hard can it be? Everything has to be working. Broken spindle on the number 59 of Gary Clute. A brake issue on the 47 of LP Doomlin. Uh, it's little things that go wrong. You hear the cliche of races being won or lost in the shop. You do have to show up prepared. LP Doomling going to rejoin the table of the field in that WeatherTech 47. We understand WeatherTech has some guests here as well. Great. What a great event. Great VIP area down in yeah. turn one, Greg. It has been a festival-like atmosphere all weekend long. It started Thursday with a concert and then three days of great racing. Mark it on your calendar. We talked about it earlier. We're not just trying to sell tickets because you and I aren't making any money nope. off the tickets. We're not on commission, folks. You will not be disappointed coming to Delaware Speedway for the Great Canadian Weekend here for the Pinty's Fall Brawl. Looks like it's ready to get back under the green flag. Brandon Watson going to restart up high. DJ Kennington down low. There's been some gamesmanship on these restarts. Some cat and mouse. This looks pretty steady, though. Brandon Watson hard on the loud pedal, and we're set to go for the second half of the Pinty's Ball Brawl. Really good restart for him. He was able to drop right down to the inside line in corner number one. We haven't seen that very often here this afternoon for Brandon. We certainly have not. Kevin LaCroix going to take advantage. He draws up alongside the 17 at Kennington, and they'll bump doors a little bit as they race down the front straightaway. Side by side, they are into each other. DJ Kennington, Kevin Lacroix. Here comes Raphael Lassard. Now he'll go to the inside of the 74, where he's been pretty much all afternoon. Both of those cars had to be chased up the racetrack. Kevin Lacroix trying to get back into the groove to go and mount a challenge back on the 17 to DJ Kennington. Remember, they're battling for second place in the points with the 18 of Alex Tagliani. So right now, both those drivers doing what they need to do. But let's see if Kevin Lacroix gets back towards the 17. He is well known. If he wants to pay you back, he will do it swiftly and he will do it seriously. DJ Kennington has found himself back in that second spot, trailing Brandon Watson, Lacroix, Lassard, and then it's side by side. Jake the Snake, Sheridan on the outside, cracking the top five. Sheridan looking great out there in the number three as he squeezes down on the Trayton Lapsovich number 20 machine. Maybe squeezed down a little too hard. Lapsovich goes by, Ranger goes by. Kevin Lacroix inching ever so close to the back bumper of DJ Kennington. Noses to the inside of the 17, but he couldn't get it to stick. Great racing from second on back right now. It's been the Brandon Watson show, but behind that, DJ Kennington trying to hold off Kevin Lacroix. Lassard and Lapsovich make up the top five. Here comes Ranger sticking the nose on the back end of the 20 machine of Lapsovich. You give these crew chiefs an opportunity to make adjustments on these race cars to suit their drivers, and we'll see who adjusted the best out here. It's still Brandon Watson out in front, but the 74 of Kevin Lacroix looks extra racy out there as he runs in the third spot. Trouble in turn number one. Wallace Stacy goes around in the number 66. And he'll roll it down to the bottom in corner number two. Flat left rear tire. It might, yeah, is just it the left yeah. rear on the 66 is flat. I thought maybe both left side tires. And he is going to try and creep around a pit lane, and that's probably going to put us under the caution flag. 
He is stopped now on the back stretch. There you see that left rear down to the rim. Wallace Stacy. A stern warning being given out to the 66 of Dexter Stacy saying don't do that again. Black flag in hand for Mike Charest. He won't need it. The 66 is heading down pit lane. It wouldn't surprise me if they hold him for an extra lap or two or five. Or... But the racers are here. You want to race. You get a flat tire. You want a yellow. Turn two has not been friendly to the Stacys. No. It's been a scene of a couple of spins. Well, three or four now between Wallace and Dexter here. Took a few crew members to lift up the left side of the car. There's just no clearance to get the jack down underneath with a flat tire. To get that fresh general tire on there and they'll tighten it down and we'll see. Now the NASCAR official has stepped out of the way. Now we hear word coming down to hold the 66. Poor Gloria Eng, she does a great job down there with the stop and go sign, but she is no match for a 3,000 pound stock car. <laughs> Not sure how long they're gonna hold Wallace Stacy. It's at least a one lap penalty. Well, Mark Dilly on pit road now in the Leland Industries IHL 64. The attention of his crew, Glenn Styers back on pit road. Hood. Oh, go ahead. The hood going to go up on the 64 of Mark Dilley as they have a look. I'm not sure what they're doing to the Styers car. Bit of chassis adjustment there, but they're going to have to hurry up if he doesn't want to lose another lap. Donald Teach has literally had an up and down day. He was running in the top five at the start of this race, dropped outside of the top ten, and really looked like he was fading quick through the field. But now he's back up to the seventh spot. So a good uh, rebound going here right now for the driver of the 80 machine. These races are so much fun, Greg, to watch the ebbs and flows of, of the races that goes on. I mean, really... Brandon Watson, DJ Kennington, Raphael Lassard, they've been right up at the very front all day long. But even back to Kevin Lacroix, there's been some forward, backward. Not all the way to the back, but they've made spots. They've lost spots. Let's see if Brandon Watson can get another restart like the last one. He really got a great jump. Yeah, he was able to tuck down to the bottom lane when he got to corner one. I don't know if he's gonna have the room this time. No, DJ Kennington's right there, matches him door for door through corner two and down the back stretch. They race side by side down into turn number three. They are absolutely locked wheel to wheel down into the turn. They come off the corner, Kennington able to come off off the corner with a nice arc. It's still Brandon Watson leading the way, but DJ Kennington has given it all he's got out there in the Castro Edge 17. He is really rolling that bottom right now, giving Brandon Watson fits on that outside line as they come off the corner. Can Watson get the power to the track and clear him at the line? He will that time. Oh, and we got a big pile up down in four. Styers involved. Cathcart, TJ Rinomato. I didn't see what happened there, but uh, the two machine looks to have taken the worst of it. Daniel Bois might have had a piece of that as well in the, goodness gracious, someone drove up right Broke up the into the cockpit of the Renamato number two. We have a replay, look towards the back of the field there. Bois got together with the 71 of Cathcart. Oh. I'm surprised that did that much damage that. Yes, I, I was expecting something magnificent. I thought exactly what you said. Someone had to have dri driven right up over the car, but just where he hit it caused that body to 
They pulled the A post down and cracked the windshield. Daniel Bois in the 31 is down on pit road to the attention of his crew. We'll have another look at this replay. Bois down on the inside of Brian Cathcart. They slap back ends. And it was Daniel Bois that Green Amato yeah. made contact with. There it is. What a mess. And I, I, it's quite possible it just ripped the pretty off that yeah. number two, but I'm not sure if the left front might be towed out significantly. Daniel Bois is rolling again, still working on the 64 of Mark Dilly. He's had that hood up for a while now. And there's TJ Rinamato on the pit lane, so they'll work on that left side of the car. And it looks like there's one crew member back behind the wall sort of waving things off there. Possibly thinking things are terminal. Don't know if all the crew members are in agreement though. Some of them are still working, some of them are not. We'll see if they're able to get TJ Rinomato back on track. We're gonna go back to green though, Brandon Watson again, choosing the outside for this restart. Losing some of the sunlight here, so we're gonna be racing under the lights. Cars always look faster under the lights, Greg. We're about to see them get fast here. Brandon Watson. DJ Kennington, we've seen some fantastic restarts between these two. Oh, DJ got a good restart there. We'll go down into turn number one again. He can only draw right up even with that nine machine. It's something else. But he's got a good run down the back stretch. Brandon drives a little bit deeper into three, but here goes Kennington through the center, rolling well side by side. They touch at the line. It's still Brandon Watson. Contact again down in one. Watson will go up the banking just a little bit. That opens the door. DJ Kennington and now Raphael Lassard looked low. DJ Kennington knows he's in that battle with Kevin Lacroix. He knows he wants to end the season on a high note, so he's giving it his all. He'll tuck in behind right in front of the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Lacroix gives DJ Kennington a bit of a push down into the corner. Pushes Kennington into the nine of Brandon Watson. That opens the door for Raphael Lassard. Whoa, contact with the race leaders. Wow, the intensity has picked up a whole nother level. Here comes Lassard now to the inside of the number nine machine. They're beating and banging down into one. I believe when we watched that again, it was Kevin Lacroix from the third row creating that carnage up ahead and sitting back and watching what's going on. Here's Andrew Ranger in the 27 as well. What a battle. High speed bumper cars right now, and that is what's going on. It's Brandon Watson holding on to the lead. Lassard in second. DJ e. Kennington hung on that outside line. And here comes Andrew Ranger into this. Andrew Ranger, who was half spun out about four times today in the middle of three and four, up out of the groove, high, wide, and hairy. And now here he is battling at the front with these race leaders. My goodness. <laughs> Now Kevin Lacroix has made a move on DJ Cannington again. Points ramifications there for the second spot in the points championship. Donald Teague right in the mix. Jake Sheridan right in the mix. What a battle oh, here at Delaware. Three car rolled the wall on the front stretch. That car bobbled something awful. He'll keep it going. We've got Donald Teach to his inside. Now Kennington tucks in front of Lacroix down in three. Lacroix right there on the back bumper. I mean, you couldn't slide a credit card between the bumpers of these race cars as they do battle here in the top five at Delaware. Kennington tries to close the door on Lacroix. Lacroix keeps his front bumper there. Kennington slides up the racetrack, still able to stay out ahead of that 74 machine. Lassard holding on to second, but he's got Andrew Ranger big in his rear view mirror. That 27 machine after the break has turned on the Jets as he is looking for that second spot. He'll come to the inside of Lassard off a of corner two. Battle is on for second. Jake Sheridan still hanging on to the outside in that number three. He'll stick a nose to the high side of Kevin Lacroix. Lacroix to the inside of DJ Kennington. And Andrew Ranger trying to find racing room to battle with Raphael Lassard. Off a of corner two they'll work. It's Brandon Watson 
Lassard, Ranger, Kennington, and Lacroix, the top five, then it's side by side between Tiege and Jake Sheridan in that three machine. Now Lacroix looks low on Kennington, just in front of those two drivers. Ranger getting a great run on Lassard, just like Kevin Lacroix getting a great run on DJ Kennington. Lacroix's a little bit better as he's able to draw up alongside that 17. Let's see how deep he can run it into three. Off the corner they come. Ranger down to the inside. Here's Lacroix to the inside of DJ Kennington. Good side-by-side -side battles back there between Lacroix and Kennington, Tej and Sheridan. Wow, Sheridan again flirting with that outside wall off of turn number two. Ranger all the way along the inside of Rafael Lassard. And we've got an issue in turn two. It's the 31 of Daniel Bois. A little bit off the pace coming off of turn two and down the backstretch. Brandon Watson, once again, when they get some laps on the board, he's able to pull away as, again, as you said, Jake Sheridan flirts with that outside wall. Now he's got Trayton Lapsovich right beside him. He'll try to slip the nose past as we continue to watch Kevin Lacroix work on DJ Kennington. And they are closing in on Rafael Lassard and Andrew Ranger as they do battle for that fourth spot. Everything is looking good for Brandon Watson as he continues to pull away in that number nine. He's got nobody to race with out at the front. Andrew Ranger continuing to look low on the eight of Lassard as they work down in corner number one. He'll draw up to the rear wheel of the eight machine. Tucks back in line down the back stretch. Lacroix and Kennington still side by side. Jake Sheridan and Trayton Lapsovich, they're getting ugly out there. Lapsovich got to the inside of Sheridan. Sheridan slammed the door shut on corner exit. They continue to do battle, but it's not as friendly as it was a couple laps ago. Let's go or go home time at this point right now as things heating up within the top five. Donald Teach right there in the sixth spot watching this battle between Kennington, Lacroix, who have caught Ranger and Lassard. A little bit of smoke as the tires rub between Kevin Lacroix and DJ Kennington. Wallace Stacy, whether he likes it or not, he's going to become a part of this battle as they race down the backstretch. Lacroix has to tuck back in line. Well, for Brandon Watson, it looks easy right now, but that last restart could have cost him the whole race. That was not a hard break or not an easy breakaway for the driver of the number nine machine, who once again continues to pace this field. Andrew Ranger saw DJ Kennington coming and he did something interesting. He ran the inside groove down the front stretch, left the outside open for DJ Kennington. DJ couldn't complete the pass. That allowed Kevin Lacroix in the 74 to close back in. And how fitting right now, the sun is setting in the horizon. We're actually seeing the sun shining here as the sun sets on the 2022 20, season for the NASCAR Pinty Series. Great one it's been so far. Kevin Lacroix still trying to make that move on DJ Kennington. He'll draw even as they enter turn one, but Kennington with a good run off the turn. That's actually as close as Lacroix has been. He'll try to shove it deep down into the third turn. Try to get an advantage on that 17, but Kennington is just so good off the corners. There we watch Trayton Lapsovich and Jake Sheridan. They've been at each other here now for the last 10 or so laps. Lapsovich to the inside of the three machine. They'll go side by side down the back stretch into three another time. Sheridan is able to drive deeper into the corners than the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. That's where he gets his advantage and he'll draw ahead of that 20 machine once again. Finally, their single file, Andrew Ranger, DJ Kennington in the 17, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, the 80 of Donald Teach. Teach really has not been a part of this battle. He's just kind of been riding behind these cars. Perhaps biding his time, Greg. There he is, tucked up behind the 74 as Lacroix once again pulls up alongside DJ Kennington as they race down into corner number three. Behind the top three, who are pretty much spread apart now, Lassard in second behind Watson and Ranger in that third position. Lacroix drove it deep into the turn, let the car slide up just a little bit in three and four. Now he gets the run in one and two. The 74 will clear the 17, and now Donald Deeds will make his decision. He'll follow the 74 of Kevin Lacroix and try to clear the 17 of Kennington. What an afternoon it's been for DJ Kennington, right in the thick of the lead battle all afternoon but that last restart did not play in his favor he shuffled now outside of the top five i think for the first time this afternoon absolutely 
We have just completed lap 174. Next time by, it'll be 75 laps to go here in the Pinty's Fall Brawl. So far, these drivers have minded their manners. Things have gotten a little heated between Sheridan and Lapsovich, but looks what happened. Look what happens when they decide to start playing nice. They close in on the DJ Kennington number 17. Brandon Watson continuing to pace the field as he'll pass the Cathcart 71 machine down in corner number three. Lassard is right now about 10 to 12 car lengths back. And then you've got Ranger about the same distance back in third. And Lacroix is closing in on him. As hairy as this has been, Greg, this is the calm before the storm. Yeah. <laughs> this is things gearing up for that final push to the finish. For Kevin Lacroix, it's the final push on the 27 of Andrew Ranger. He's lightning quick through the center of these turns. Look at the right front of the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich, the fender dragging on the Grimsby driver's number 20 as he hits down into the corners. Oh, big contact between Ranger and Lacroix. Sorry, Greg. They both went flying up the racetrack. That should have been a crash. Nice save by Ranger again. That's not the first time today he's had to make a big save. My goodness, and like you say, Trayton Lapsovich Starting to shed some of the body work on that 20 machine. The nice thing about these fiberglass bodies, it's not going to cut a tire. It's not really going to cause an issue. The officials will be watching. So Donald T just worked his way back up to fourth. We documented that earlier. His slide from racing inside the top five, back through the field, got back into the top ten, and now he's trying to track down Kevin Lacroix who now is that third place runner. It is not like Donald Teach to be the calm, quiet type, taking advantage of opportunities. Usually he's the one who creates opportunities out there, but he's driving a great race in that 80 machine. There you see Lacroix and his advantage now over Teach as they both chase Raphael Lassard and Brandon Watson. And I'll tell you what, Lassard has not lost touch with Watson. He's still maintaining a pretty close distance to the leader. He's not putting any pressure by any means, but he's not losing a ton of ground. No, and let's see, once they're both out in open racetrack, which they are now, we'll look at the lap times after the next lap when both of them are in open racetrack. See who's turning faster lap times right now. There's still a lot of racing left to go. Whoa, problem for Wallace Stacy. Boy, oh boy. He tried to get down to the bottom of the racetrack, but he's hung up on the high side in that number 66. I believe he's trying to get to pit road. Not sure what the issue is on the 66 of Stacy, but he is off the pace. Leader across the stripe another time. Lassard second. Lacroix third. Then it's Tiege and Kennington, your top five. Ranger into the sixth spot after his wild ride there a handful of laps ago. And Brandon Watson is still faster than the eight of Rafael Lassard by about half a tenth of a second. Here comes Ranger to the inside of DJ Kennington now off of corner number four. A few cars there all looking for position. Kennington, Ranger, Sheridan, Lapsovich, and Cameron. Brandon Watson swings to the outside of that O'Neill Electric, Deco number 84 of Larry Jackson. Put that car a lap down. This is not unusual to see things spread out like this, a long green flag run. It is unusual if it stays like this, Greg, and I don't anticipate that for a second. The restarts have been extremely entertaining here this afternoon. Brandon Watson survived the latest one. That was the, the closest he's come to having major catastrophe here today. Otherwise, he's had some good close racing with DJ Kennington, but it's uh, been, I'm not going to say easy, but uh, he hasn't had the calamity that could have happened on that last one. 188 laps complete. Once we get beyond lap 200, that's when we would call it the championship rounds. That's when it's time to not be as courteous as you've been all day long. It's time to cash in your chips. 
and show the field what you've got to deal with out there. Lacroix solidly in that third spot. Teach in fourth. Kennington continues to lead this pack of cars, and right now it's the most hotly contested. Kennington, Ranger, and then this battle right here with Cameron and Trayton Lapsovich, whose car is looking like it's shedding weight every lap. Yeah, it's a little used up, the 20 and <laughs> Lapsovich, but these are durable race cars out here. Still got a lot of fight left in it. Jake Sheridan right up on the back bumper of Andrew Rangers number 27. For those brakes just glowing red on the 27 of Andrew Ranger. This track, a half a mile, will use a lot of brakes. Two different ends to the speedway. One and two different than three and four. You really got to get on the binders to get woed up into three. Sheridan does get woed up on the inside of Ranger. Nobody is more comfortable in the outside groove at any racetrack than Andrew Ranger, the driver of that number 27. But Sheridan, with a lot of laps here at Delaware Speedway, gets a good run off of turn number two. He edges ahead of the 27 machine. Cameron going to follow the three to the bottom. But Ranger's not laying over. Starting to notice there aren't many cars out there with at least a small donut on them or a, a little bit of damage on the nose. It's been, the restarts especially, have been pretty chaotic out there, but no major incidents from them. Give the drivers credit. There's some beating and banging going on through this race, but nothing wild has happened yet. No, it's physical racing, but it's, it's good, hard, short track racing. I'd have to say if there's a clean car out there, a couple of them, the 18 of Alex Tagliani, the 22 of Kyle Steckley, they're hanging just behind this wild battle between Jake Sheridan, the two GM Pie machines of Andrew Ranger and Mark Antoine Cameron and the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. There we see Ranger on the outside of Cameron as they come through three and four, another time by the stand. Sheridan in front of them and Trayton Lapsovich still wagging that front fender on the 20 machine. And Brandon Watson is starting to catch some pretty significant traffic, and this is probably the biggest group that he's caught all afternoon. Yeah, I'd have to say it is. They're, they're faster than the average group of cars about to go a lap down, so Brandon Watson's going to have to be cautious with how he approaches this one. And if you're Raphael Lassard, this is a good opportunity to gain some ground, and when the guy in front of you is maybe a half a tenth, quicker than you are passing some slower cars the best way to make that up so we'll see what Raphael Lassard can do he tries to drop on the back end of that number nine machine but boy oh boy Brandon Watson the Tricorp number nine he has been the story of this race oh you're absolutely right and how about Andrew Ranger in that 27 machine he was up there battling in the top three and now he's drifted back losing positions Trayton Lapsovich trying to make the pass on the inside He'll get it done off of turn number two. A little further ahead, Jake Sheridan putting the pressure on DJ Kennington. The three of Sheridan down the inside of that number 17. Yeah, one driver surfacing towards the front. The other one trying to hold on right now. DJ Kennington as he is going to get freight train now, I think, by Cameron as well. Well, not so easy. No, he'll fight for all he's worth in that 17. But he's seeing the 74 of Kevin Lacroix drive further and further away out his windshield. Now Brandon Watson is close. Whoa, Matthew Kingsbury. Wow. All sorts of sideways battling with J.P. Bergeron off of turn number four. Alex LeBay will head to the outside. Dexter Stacy right in his tire tracks. And look at right behind them, our race leader, Brandon Watson. This is not what he wants to see. Not at all. He's kind of going to end up boxed in here with this battle going on. As Dexter Stacy is next in front of him. He's just gotten by Dumoulin. Kingsbury on the bottom, as well as LeBay and Bergeron. So Watson in the thick of it, and this is going to help Raphael Lassard. 
and it's slow traffic catching up on slower traffic right in front of the race leader. So there's going to be a lot of moving parts out there as they're three wide down into turn one. Brandon Watson doing a great job positioning himself where he needs to be, keeping himself mostly out of harm's way. So Watson wheels it off a of corner number four, but he's boxed in behind Bergeron. Kingsbury right now racing side by side. They've got LeBay in front of them, and Lassard has cut that lead in half. He's cut it in half in terms of distance, but there's still yeah. cars between himself and the race leader that are going to make life very difficult. But some of the lap traffic is looking to challenge back on the nine of Brandon Watson as he tiptoes through that slower traffic. So now he's got the Bergeron and LeBay cars in front to deal with. Those Brandon Watson... Lassard trying to dispose of some of this lap traffic quicker than the leader does. He's there. A couple of car lengths ahead are, is the leader, Brandon Watson. He's got three lap cars now between he and Brandon Watson. Yeah, Lassard will work to the inside of LP Dumlin to try to make that move, but you can already see he's being held up, just not able to run his line, not able to get the power down. Alex LeBay slides up the racetrack. That opens the door to Watson, and LeBay goes a lap down. 41 laps left to go in this one. It's been all Brandon Watson, except for a couple of laps led by DJ Kennington, who has now faded outside of the top five. He's running in the eighth position. Watson has cleared all of that traffic. Rafael Lassard still has three cars to try to work his way through there. Coming off of turn number two, nose to tail. Alex LeBay in the 36, J.P. Bergeron in the 1, the 12 of Matthew Kingsbury, and he'll head to the outside. That's how Brandon Watson was able to get it done. Here we see Tagliani and Kyle Steckley. That's a battle for the ninth position. Two, as you mentioned, Adam, clean-looking race cars right now. They've had solidly good days. Kyle Steckley was making a charge towards the top five at one point this afternoon, but settling in right now in the top ten. He's, he's drove a nice, clean race. He's done a great job out there in that 22 machine. APC sponsorship on that race car as well as Quick Quick. A couple of Quick Quick sponsored entries. Alex Tagliani and Kyle Steckley doing battle there through turn number two. Racing amidst some slower traffic. There you see Brandon Watson off a of corner two, down the hill into corner number three. Probably going to uh, lock up that Rookie of the Year title here for the NASCAR Pinty Series. What a way to do that if he can find victory lane here tonight. Boy, you're not kidding, Greg. It's been a dominating performance here. A lot of cars showed up, a lot of people with something to prove, but Brandon Watson showing that he is definitely the car to beat here this afternoon, but there's a lot of racing still to go, 35 laps to go. Basically a Friday night special here at Delaware Speedway. Here's Tagliani and Steckley dealing with the uh, Larry Jackson 84. Ooh, Kyle Steckley with a handful off the fourth corner. I think we might see a little of emotion out of Brandon Watson if he wins this one. I don't know. Time will tell. We'll see. Oh! oh trouble in turn two. Cameron got into the back end of Sheridan. What is with the 96 in the three car? Yeah. Was Shea Gemmel driving the three or La the eight last year? Oh, I was not here, but I thought it was the three. You might be right. It could have been the eight. But interesting story. How about those two drivers having their issues last year? Mark Antoine Cameron is going to win the championship this year. As we look at the replay down into one and two. Yeah, Cameron just kind of squared him up, lightened up the back end. Now, where, where was the three of Sheridan going? He's down here going into turn one. The 96 of Cameron all the way at the other end of the racetrack, so... He'll have a hard time there. Alex LeBay going to get the free pass. But race fans, 218 laps are complete. 
When we go back to green, there'll be less than 30 laps to go in the Pinty's Fall Brawl, and I dare say the first shot has been fired. And it was Mark Antoine Cameron, our series champion, down into one and two. You see it on the board there. A straight shot into the back bumper of Jake Sheridan. Sheridan goes around. On the lead lap. There'll be 12 cars. Once Alex LeBay gets the free pass, I would be shocked if we don't see DJ Kennington come down pit road to try to make some sort of adjustment on that Castrol Edge 17. On the lead lap. Our race leader, Brandon Watson in the nine, the eight of Raphael Lassard. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix, the 80 of Donald Teach. Mark Antoine Cameron in the 96 rounds out the top five. In sixth is the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. DJ Kennington is seventh in the 17. 18 of Alex Tagliani is eighth. 22 of Kyle Steckley is ninth. The three of Jake Sheridan is 10th. 11th is the 27 of Andrew Ranger. And then 12th will be Alex LeBay who gets the free pass. 12 cars on the lead lap. 220 laps are now complete. And if you thought that last restart was entertaining, I think we're about to hit another level. I think we are as well. Kevin Lacroix in that 74, always aggressive. So Jake Sheridan in the three, heading down pit lane. He's drawn the attention of the officials. And I believe to paraphrase Greg for not following official directives. <laughs> that was a good job paraphrasing. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it got a little colorful. I believe Jake Sheridan is going to be held for a lap. So things go from bad to worse for Jake Sheridan. We are merely the messengers. And once again, hats off to Gloria. She stands there with that stop sign. With every bit of confidence, the driver's going to... It looks like Jake is kind of waving his hand saying, what's going on? But... The message will be delivered to the spotter, to the crew chief. That he didn't do as he was told, and that's why he was being penalized. We'll see if the go sign is given. Yep. So Sheridan back out, one lap down. If there is a yellow, he still has the opportunity to get the free pass. There were certain penalties. If you get those penalties, you, you forfeit your right to get a free pass later in the race. That is not one of them, although it did draw some cuss words. All right, business about to pick up again. 26 laps to go once they take this green flag. Brandon Watson going to fire on the outside of that number nine. Rafael Lazard in the eight, gonna try to keep him honest on the bottom. Row number two, that is the most aggressive second row I think you can put together. <laughs> Kevin Lacroix in the 74 and Donald Teague in the 80. Brandon Watson rolling out ahead of the eight of Rafael Lazard. Now Lazard closes in door to door. Oh, Watson playing the game there. And he's able to clear down in one. But watch this. I don't think Lazard is thrilled with what went on there with that restart. Let's see how close he can get to the nine of Watson. Sends it down into turn number three. 
To the inside he goes, contact between oh, Lazard and Watson, no. and Rafael Lazard goes around. Wow. DJ Kennington just made the most veteran move I've seen. In Watch what DJ Kennington does in that number 17. We can go back and talk about Brandon Watson playing games on the starts and restarts, which is his opportunity to do within reason. He can set the pace. It kind of got carried away. So that restart, there were hard feelings right from the drop of the green flag, Greg. So they've thrown the red flag. They'll get the safety crews out onto the scene. We see Alex Tagliani moving around inside the Viagra NTN number 18. I think we'll see once we watch the replay, Kevin Lacroix was very involved in what was going on down there. Watch the 74. So contact with the eight and the nine. Okay, and there's nothing Lacroix could have no. done. But watch Kennington. Let up, let up, let up. Drive Andrew away. Ranger almost flipped over the hood of DJ Kennington. Like, watch him. This is just veteran. Okay, I'm going to hang out here. Yeah, it's time to go. <laughs> Folks, what a great addition is that screen on the front straightaway. My goodness. So by all reports, the drivers are... So we are going to send a crew out to uh, to see Alex Tagliani. Spencer, can you you have the ability to roll that again? So we'll have a look here coming off of turn number four, the contact with Watson and Lassard, and then. Man, oh man. And I mean, a lot of drivers did it. How about it, folks? How about a round of applause? Alex Tagliani climbs out of that number 18 machine. He could have waited for the EMS, but. On a, on a tough day like that, they, they like the drivers to stay in the car, but there comes a point when it's, listen, my office is all tore up. And that 18 machine, I think, until that point, didn't have much of a scratch on it. Tag the any favoring that right arm. So we've got cars parked all over this facility and not all of them have drivers in them. So Andrew Ranger has left his car. It is parked at the start finish line. Alex Tagliani obviously is out of that 18 machine. There's not a lot of options, Greg. When you come off a of turn four and things start to happen here at Delaware, you can speed up, slow down, but there's only so many lanes to choose from. You've got to let things develop. Now there's far more room on the back stretch here at Delaware mm -hmm. if there's problems, but uh, things funnel off pretty quickly off a of corner four, and we've seen it cause some big accidents here. Great job by DJ Kennington. Great job by Dexter Stacy, who I believe avoided any damage. Yeah, it looks his car looks pretty clean over there on the back straightaway. And it's going to take a couple of minutes, folks, for us to give you a field rundown here. I'll say nice job by Brandon Watson to hold on. On these last two restarts, he's had a couple of shots where he could have easily gone sideways in front of the field and 
and cost himself the win, but there he is, still out in front. Great car control. Phenomenal car control. In fact, we've got to give a tip of the hat to Rafael Lassard, who I believe also did not sustain any damage after being the yep. car that got turned. I thought initially we were going to see Kevin Lacroix being really aggressive, and that might have been a factor, but it really wasn't. L Lassard kind of backed out. Of whether it was to let Brandon Watson gather that car in or whether it was just to save his own car. And that's what brought on the contact from Kevin Lacroix and sent him around off of turn number four. But, I mean, that almost looks like one of those cutaway cars for Alex yeah. Tagliani. That thing is a mess, and we're going to see the other side of it here as they pull it. So that bar, those three bars you're seeing at the back, folks, in the white, that, that's the magic. That's what yep. protects that driver. That's the cocoon that they sit in. So you can peel away the rear window. You can peel away the bodywork. But those three bars that come up behind the driver's head and then, and then a head on the roll cage, that's what protects this driver. And, and we're so thankful for the safety advances that have been made. Because to have a wreck like that and have the driver get out, from the looks of it favoring one of his hands, whether it was his right arm or his left arm, you know, that could have been a whole lot worse. It was not. These are well-built race cars. So once we get back to yellow, we'll be able to tell you whose cars are unscathed. And this could possibly put Jake Sheridan back on the lead lap, could it not? Ah, it's very possible. Let's look down. Mm. Are there other no, cars? there's other no. drivers okay. ahead. J.P. Bergeron, L.P. Yeah. Dumoulin. There's, there's a few ahead. But it sets up another restart, and restarts often set up more yellows. So all hope is not lost. But I can only imagine the thoughts on the Ed Hackinson Racing pit boxes Last year, things ended very badly off of the nose of the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. And looks like deja vu as we have a good look. And those are rubber marks up the back bar. So the bar that comes back off the top of the roller cage towards that left rear tire, that is rubber marks from, I believe, the Andrew Ranger 27. So Ranger's car would have driven right up two inches off the top of Alex Tagliani's head. 25 laps remain. Caden Lapsovich going back to have a look and teams will throw, throw a tarp over top of that race car. Don't want to give away any of the family secrets. Well, how many laps left now? 25 laps 25. to go. We call it the Pinty's Fall Brawl. We're into the championship rounds, and we've just witnessed our first knockout. Look at the marks on the wall up there. Spencer, can you show us that again? Do we have that ability? But I want you to stop it as soon as the spin starts. So as soon as the eight car goes around, I'd love to stop the shot so we can have a look at where all the cars are and what their options are. So don't stop it until they're well off at of turn four. But here they come into the corner. Brandon Watson makes his beautiful save. Lassard is getting spun out. Now we'll look at the field bearing down. So Donald Teej, he's in good shape. He's already got by Trayton Lapsovich, that's a pucker up moment if you're the driver of the 20 watching what's going on because you're still behind the scene of the accident. Great job, Spencer, to roll this through. Lacroix backs down. He's able to get through, and that's where the funnel happens. Camerant and Tagliani. Apologies to the wizard. Matthew Kingsbury gets through. Dexter Stacy gets through. Just, just so many things have to happen to keep that from being a much bigger crash. And there you see Lassard pulling through that unscathed. DJ Kennington does have a bit of damage on the right front. As he did take a bit of a bump. But, boy, to be right in the 
the eye of the storm and come out that unscathed. Uh, like you mentioned, good bit of driving by DJ Kennington. Imagine what we could have drawn if we had a telestrator, Greg. I know. That's exactly what went through my mind. We can dream. For, for those of you just tuning in, we, we've been promised new gadgets, and, and they just haven't shown up just yet. But, but we haven't shown enough responsibility to be able to ha handle them professionally. <laughs> and yellow flag is back out, thank goodness. We've had a red flag all three nights this week. Yes, we have. And, uh, update if you're just joining us, Friday night, Tate O'Leary. Uh, was pulled from his car. We understand a concussion. He is resting at home. Uh, and that's actually great news for, for the amount yep. of, of drama and anticipation there was in getting him out of the car. Of course, last night's red flag was because the oil drain plug came out of the number nine of Brandon Watson, and they had to clean up the racetrack. So we will sort this field out and get everybody rolling. Where's the... Where's the pace car? So they send the cars off from the scene of the accident. We'll pick up some debris there in turn number four as Glenn Styers pulls away. Some of the pretty has been worn off the zero of Glenn Styers. Now well, Rafael Assard is on the pit lane. So J.P. Bergeron is right behind the caution car. Rear comes off, the three is taking care of it. They're doing some work to that car. This looks like a 
And when we say fresh, it's probably the one they took off after the first half of the race. But race fans, this has had a little bit of everything. I mean, this is an entertaining short track race. It's had a lot of side-by-side -side racing. We had a run where there were yellows. We had a long green flag stretch. We even had a rain delay. We even had a rain delay. It's had it all. Okay, someone's hopping in the passenger side of the safety truck. Good enough. There we go. Kyle Steckley up to the top five. He survived that crash. I, I think I'm going to go back later tonight and watch that replay just to see how different drivers made it through. There was so much chaos. It is so much fun when, when we have the opportunity to talk to the truck and get the replay because that's you just get the opportunity to play it out. And it's there are drivers you'll notice, and it's at every level, Greg. You think, man, they, it always seems like they're in the yellow. Like, back when I started watching racing going back to the 80s, 90s, Dale Jarrett was in every NASCAR crash there was. The Hardy's car was always in it. You always see that. But there's a reason why there's some drivers avoid the mishaps. They're just very good at looking ahead and making the correct decisions. DJ Kennington back down on pit road in that 17. So whatever they've done, they raised the hood, they assessed the situation, and now they've decided, okay, here's what we're going to do. So a piece of debris down there in three, and I think the safety crew has spotted that now. We'll pick that up. Now, normally they'll stop before the debris, right but there. I think that's a different truck. So I think the truck in turn uh, two, because the process is to stop behind the debris to protect whoever gets right. out of the truck to pick up the debris. I don't even like the word debris, and I've said it 17 times in the last five minutes. <laughs> Let it roll off the tongue more. Debris. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I need. To. Where's Dave Bradley? <laughs> He's, he pronounces the French words. So instead of parking the truck, we'll just park the side-by-side -side on one side of the track, walk across the... There we go. What are we left with for laps now? 17 to go. And some speedy and drive. And that debris, that fiberglass obviously left a trail of oil. Uh, different different situations, different scenarios. I shouldn't. They've got an important job to do and a challenging job to do. They're up there cleaning up that fluid. What a job. The ownership group, Russ Erlen. I mean, everyone should be commended for what a great job they've done this weekend, entertaining thousands of race fans. You know, some of them came just for Friday. Some of them came just for the concert Thursday. But some of you stayed for the whole deal, from the concert to the final checkered flag, and we tip our hats to you, and thank you for being a part of this weekend. And, and we just we can't stress enough. If you have watched any of these nights of racing and you're on the fence about whether you want to come and take this in, it's a fantastic weekend of action. Or even a regular Friday night here at Delaware Speedway. They put on a fantastic show. If you're from out of town, they broadcast those live on the uh, on the stream here weekly. So it's uh, a chance to check it out. But I'll tell you what, for this being a track that I already loved coming to, what's been done here in the last couple of years is just notched it up, mm -hmm. you know, 10 more levels. Are, are you still above RVing, Greg? I, I know you tent with the family because you have to. In the oh, summertime, I, but, but why don't you get a trailer out here and come join us? I would love to. Our, our family goal is eventually to have the truck and trailer deal, but... Our family trajectory is to some one year live in an RV. I work full-time in motorsports, so it's hard to afford those types of things. I don't have a real job like you. 
you know what? You, you, I remember there was a time when we, we both tried to carve our teeth working in motorsports, and I failed miserably. <laughs> Jim Lapsovich suggest, suggesting shrapnel. That's not a bad idea. Instead of saying debris, we say shrapnel. shrapnel. Mm. How about leftovers? Leftovers are always good. Some leftovers would taste good right now. I could go for leftovers. I'm guessing some of those trailers over there have some fine leftovers from the weekend. Man, oh, man, the, the APC bunch, you should have seen what they were cooking up last night. Pig on a stick? No, I, I think there were steaks on the barbecue, oh, but there was nice. a lot of them. Nice. We uh, we crashed their party for a little <laughs> bit to say hello. And... How convenient. Hmm. I didn't have any steak. I didn't partake, but it's fun to go sight to sight. For I'm not a night person. That that's not my thing. I'm too old for that nonsense. So I went to bed and left the young people to have the fun. Greg, <laughs> I know at one point there was fireworks getting set off because I believe some of southwestern Ontario's finest showed up. And Put a I stop think, to the fun. I think everyone was pointing in different directions. <laughs> no, sir, they didn't come from here. Have you checked over there? No, sir. It's that guy with the tiny camp chairs. And I, you can see them from here. That, what a mistake that was. But uh, the fireworks started to go off, and the Lapsovich's dog darted. I mean, full <laughs> yeah. speed with no particular direction. And then here goes Trayton Lapsovich, who can run like the wind behind it. All heck had broken loose. <laughs> it's going to be a sprint to the finish. And we talked about this. Brandon Watson's had a really good long run car. And DJ Kennington was able to get the better of him on these restarts, these short, quick runs. Let's see if maybe Donald Teach has something for him here. Well, and where things have gone a little haywire is down into turn number three, and that oil dry is not going to help things any. One to go this time. Brandon Watson going to choose. Is he going to choose inside or outside? It looks like he's choosing the inside. Donald Teach even hanging back saying, you serious? <laughs> but Brandon Watson has a plan. The only time he's restarted on the inside tonight, he lost the lead to DJ Kennington. What this does puts Trayton Lapsovich right on his back bumper, and that could be part of it too. He might say, I'd rather have Lapsovich behind me than Kevin Lacroix. Who knows? But we're about to go green, and there will be 11 laps to go, race fans. Here we go, back at it to settle the Pinty's fall brawl. Boy, did Brandon Watson hang back. He did so. Donald Teach did what he could. He kind of pinched down that number nine. That's the defense he could run. They come off a of turn number two, and Teach couldn't keep pace with the number nine of Watson, but he can drive it deep down into turn number three. It looked like the oil dry, not a big issue. Brandon Watson defending that inside, and did he ever get a great launch off a of turn four? Contact, Kyle Steckley down into the inside wall on the front stretch. And we are back under yellow. There we go. The yellow comes out. As Kyle Steckley comes to rest down in turn number one. So what's interesting here, Donald Teach, if nothing else, is a veteran of a lot of short track racing. He knows what Brandon Watson did there. As let's have a look at this replay coming down off the corner contact between Camerant and the 22 of Kyle Steckley. And Steckley comes to rest down there on the inside wall, but so there was some back and forth with Watson and Teej. Watson hang, hung back like he's been doing. It puts Teej out in no man's land. But what Teej did, there is a defense. 
he turned left. Yeah. He, he put his driver's door into the right front of Brandon Watson to try to pinch down his progress. It's not going to go down the same way this time. No. <laughs> no, and, and Brandon Watson did not want to see this caution flag come back out because he did what he needed to do, and that was get away from the mess behind him. Because we've seen it happen a couple of times already where he's gotten a little bit of sideways from a tap from behind. And right now he's the car to beat, and you do not want to give this one away. No, that, that would be heartbreaking if you're Brandon Watson. I mean, he is showing he's the car to beat. He's got the best car. He's done the best job behind the wheel all night long. But that doesn't matter to anybody behind him. They all have the opportunity to race for this win. And this will change things. Not by a lot, but now Kevin Lacroix is third, not fourth. Yep. So we'll see what Brandon Watson does on this restart. Well, Dumoulin up into the top ten. He had a rough first yep. half of this race. Well, they were fixing the brakes on the yep. brake. Now he's the free pass recipient. He'll get to rejoin the tail end of the field. They go and get the debris. If the debris is on the inside of the track, they park on the outside. But if the debris is on the outside, you park on the inside. I got to stop doing that. I need, I need to stop being like that, Craig. And th the reason we bring it up is that there is a NASCAR training for, for how safety protocol and how they go about things. But they've done a great job. The debris has been cleaned up. The whole pack raced down into turn three, and nobody, nobody slid. So they did a good job of getting that surface cleaned up and ready to race on. Well, let's try it again. Five laps to go. It'll be four laps when we get the green flag. Watson's going to stick to the bottom again. See how this restart plays out again. So I'm trying to get the 36 of Alex LeBay dropped back behind the 17 of DJ Kennington. He's going to slip down. There you go. DJ Kennington back into the top five. He's battling Kevin Lacroix in the points. The, it, Alex Tagliani was also in that mix. He's obviously out of the race, so... There are races within the race going on. Look at the two front runners pumping the gas. Brandon Watson is the control car. You can bet Donald Teague is not going to come out ahead of the nine this time. Side by side to the line. Kevin Lacroix got a good run as well, heading down into turn one. Boy, Brandon Watson got a good restart here, but here comes Teague fighting back on the outside line. Watson will clear their side by side behind him. Three wide down the back straightaway, deeper in the field, but we focus our attention on the leaders. Brandon Watson leading the way, getting the drive off of turn number four. Three laps to go. Watson is out in front of Laquan Teach side by side for second. Right behind them, Trayton Lapsovich stacked up behind this battle for the second spot. Teach and Lacroix, they're not leaving Brandon Watson there. They're within a half a car length. Teach got a really good run into turn number three there. If he can come off with a good run, he's closing in on Brandon Watson. Two laps to go. Down through one and two, they go up the hill and then down the hill, down into corner number three. Watson leads, but Teach is right there. Teach has been a victim of a bump and run before. Is he going to lay one down? They come off a of turn number four. The white flag is in the air. Teach is having a look on Brandon Watson. Looks to the inside into turn number one. Here they come through corner number two for the final time and down the back stretch. Watson edges ahead, but Teej is going to give it one last shot. 
Deep into the corner goes Teej. He sets the car into the middle. Is he going to give him a bump? Down off a of turn number four. Contact. No. Watson to the win. Teej second. LaCroix third. What a race. Donald Teej showed the nine of Brandon Watson a ton of respect there. He raced him hard. He raced him clean. We're headed to victory lane. Great job by Donald Teach. He could have driven through Brandon Watson right there. Let's watch this last lap on the replay. Watson ahead. Teach gets the nose down to the inside of corner number one. They were right there side by side going down the back stretch. Good corner two exit for Brandon Watson. He edges ahead and Teach right there could have had him. And he stays tucked in behind him. Brandon Watson. Comes off the corner and picks up the win. In the Pinty Fall Brawl, the Tricorp group will be celebrating tonight as Brandon Watson does some donuts for his sponsors down there in corner number one. And he picks up the win here at Delaware Speedway. And this was the dominant car here all evening long. DJ Kennington gave him a run for his money in the middle stages of this race. But on the long runs, Brandon Watson flexed his muscle and showed that he had the car to beat. And he holds on. Celebrating down in corner number four now. The crew will run down to victory lane and catch up with their driver. Brandon Watson. Brandon Watson going to celebrate with a victory lap around the speedway before we get a chance to hear from him down in victory lane along with champion Mark Antoine Cameron. There goes Watson down into corner number three with a checkered flag in hand. Driver to Stainer, Ontario. Celebrating his win, so we'll turn things over to the folks down of Victory Lane to wrap things up here tonight. Race fans, we're going to ask for your help here. When he gets out of this race car, give him a big Delaware Speedway welcome. Remember, you'll be able to see it all next weekend on TSN. But the celebrations will go on well into tonight. A well-deserved victory. And we'll let you know when he's about to climb from this number nine machine. Race fans, he can hear you now. How about a round of applause for Brandon Watson?
now. You've won all over the province, but you get it done here tonight. What does it mean to you to finally grab a win here in the NASCAR Pinty Series and the Fall Brawl? That's definitely uh, definitely big for us. It's a hard-fought year for us. Uh, up and down our first year in this, uh, this series. NASCAR does a great job. Pinty Series, appreciate them for everything they do for us. Uh, but, you know, these way more sports guys, they, uh, they worked hard all year. Uh, definitely happy to get them uh, a win here in their home track. So we're definitely happy with all our sponsors, too. Again, couldn't have done it without them all year. Sheer amount of products. Tricorp. Uh, Tricorp has a booth here this weekend, so special thanks to them, GMS, all my crew, uh, my wife's here, Kate, and uh, just super pumped to get uh, finally get a win here. Well, Brandon, you're also, he'll get a word with Dante's. Brandon, you're also the Jostens rookie of the year. Let's go pull that yellow stripe off because you're not a rookie anymore. You're officially a winner here in the NASCAR Pinties Series. How about it for your Jostens rookie of the year and your feature winner tonight, Brandon Watson. So Donald Teej is in there giving his congratulations and we're gonna step on over and have a word with him, the driver from Boischatel, Quebec, who is just gonna be interviewed by TSN. We'll get him right after Todd Lewis has his word. So we'll get in here and have a word now. Donald Teach, huge smile on your face. Congratulations on that second place drive. Uh, thank you. You know, uh, I gave everything I got at the end. and uh, I won that, that clean, clean race for the two last lap. I think one more lap I can pass him, but you know, it was a clean race and uh, I was faster than him a little bit. A little bit. And, but the, you know, the first session we were going anywhere, you know, the car was so uh, loose and tight. So. We did on our own homework at the brakes, and uh, the car was fast at you know the second half. And uh, can say thank you to Mike McCoy and all this team, my team, my sponsorship, XPN, and uh, you know the group teach, and uh, you know that's the good way to finish uh, the season. We as we struggle a lot, uh, you know, since the beginning of the season, we're doing only the oval, and uh, we uh, we had a problem with the car, but we find it when we test last week. So. You know, I'm very proud of what, what you did today. And it's fast track, and uh, you know, I hit that track last year, but to, tonight I like it, I love it. <laughs> I, I heard a crazy rumor, Donald, that at the midway point of this race, there was some chatter on your radio. You weren't feeling there very great around lap 125, talking about maybe you, you didn't have it anymore, maybe your days were done. You know, believe me, when I was 17, when we start turn, I was 17, I say, Maybe I'm too old, you know, to rinse against those young kids. You know, I'm going to have uh, 56 next week. So I said, maybe I'm too old. And, uh, you know, but the car didn't give me what, what, what we want. But uh, the team did a great job. Mike McCoy would talk with me, uh, you know, and we changed a lot of things, your brakes, brake pedal and everything. So uh, the second half, you know, I was getting younger, maybe 35, 32, or I don't know. But, you know, I'm very proud of what we did tonight. There you go. Donald Teach with a second place run. And the important part of what he said, it was a classy race. He had every opportunity to use his front bumper and he chose not to. He can sleep well tonight and enjoy that second place result. So as things wrap up down here on the front straightaway, haven't seen yet our third place finisher, but our series champion is patiently waiting down in turn number four. 
He is going to burn up this front straightaway. Once we clear out Victory Lane, get all the pictures taken. What a weekend it's been for Brandon Watson. Last night, losing the oil drain plug on his APC late model. Long red flag allowed them to get things fixed, get the oil back in the car. He resumed, rejoined the race, but he was deep in the field. That was not to be the case tonight. He was up front all night long, a commanding performance for the driver of this number nine.
So the festivities still going on down here in Victory Lane. The, the product of having a first-time winner, the excitement of a first-time winner and Brandon Watson. So a lot of photos to be taken. Mark Antoine Cameron waiting patiently down in turn number four. The entire GM Paillet crew waiting here in Victory Lane. They're going to have to do some crowd control and clear people away because if this championship celebration is anything like celebrations in the past, there are going to be donuts and a big old smoke show down this front straightaway as Cameron will burn it down. Things are being cleared out now. As the crowd begins to part down here on the front straightaway. Brandon Watson in that Tricorp APC. GMS RGC Sports number nine. Drives away down into technical inspection and Dave White, the builder of those race cars down here in Victory Lane. Able to breathe a sigh of relief. It has been a season for White Motorsports. A lot of race cars to be prepared. And a lot of success. Folks, it's about to get loud down here in Victory Lane. As Mark Antoine Cameron soon to get the signal, it's time to light it up and begin the celebration after earning the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series title in fine fashion. All he needed to do was take the green flag here this afternoon at Delaware to lock it in. He was in the midst of the battle all day long and he's still got a beautiful number 96 GM Paye sponsored Chevrolet to put into victory lane and be crowned the series champion. Here he comes, folks. How about a round of applause as the smoke show begins? I think I might have overpromised and underdelivered on that smoke show. But a celebration nonetheless as Todd Lewis gonna slip in and get an interview with our champion. Crew Chief Robin McCluskey down here. It is his third NASCAR Pinty Series title. Tony Spiteri there to greet our championship driver in victory lane. And the crew just chomping at the bit to get in there and celebrate. As Cameron finally takes off his helmet, he is ready to climb out of this race car. He's been sitting down there patiently in turn number four. The driver from St. Leonard to Aston, Quebec. Puts on his championship hat.
How about a round of applause, race fans, your 2022 NASCAR Penny Series champion, Mark Antoine Cameron. Now you were champions, I'll say.